Oh, hello there. Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm your host, Bob, the Knife Junkie DeMarco. And tonight we have a very special show. We're going to be joined by Mike Emler and of Crazy Sharp Knife Sharpening Services. And we're also going to have Jared Neve on here. And they have there's some shared DNA there with their sharpening and, and how they do things. Uh, I just recently got a knife back from, from Jared Neve. I, I sent him a uh, my, my sacks from Emerson Knives to be rehabbed. Jock's Knife, good to have you here, sir. I just sent you something in the mail today. Uh, Jason, lovely to have you too. Hey, everyone. Jason Daniel Stone. That's a cool name. Mark Herrera, good evening to you, sir. Good evening to you. And Slicey, I just received the package from you, and we're going to be talking about these later. Uh, Mike Emler has some on him also. Bad Monkey, good to have you here, sir. Justin EDC, how you doing? Good to have you. Blade Ogre. Ah, all the usual suspects, man. It's great. Calica for life 81. I'm ready. Does that mean you were born in 81 or your Mustang is your Mustang's not from 81? Metallica. I saw the Metallica show when they were uh, playing with the cult in Cleveland, Ohio in the late 80s. Uh, and it was their uh, uh, Injustice for All tour. It was really awesome. It's been one minute. We're already sharing. <laughs> You're right. This is a family show. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to turn the ship here a little bit. Jared Clevenger, another cool name. What is it with all these cool names? I'm sure at some point we're going to see Lavender Pants too. Another cool name. Uh, so yes, I, I wanted to finish this little anecdote before I bring our guests in. The Knife Whisperer, it's good to have you here, Joe. Joe Frazier, just like the boxer. I sent this. Well, you know what? I'll talk about this in a minute. When Jared is on, I will sing his praises so he can blush before you all. Uh, let's bring Mike Emler on. Mike, how you doing? Hmm. Oh, really? It's quite interesting. Well, anyway, uh, Mike and I were talking right before. <laughs> there we go. Hey, how's it going, sir? What happens when you do things live? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, some of my favorite stuff is live. So, Mike, very good to have you, sir. Well, thank you for having me again. This is uh, this is fun. I just texted. I just texted Jared. He should be. He should be jumping in unless he fell asleep. No, 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 no. Well, he, I know he's a hardworking man, yeah. but he's a. Uh, Hey, there Jared, you. how you doing, man? Oh, there I am. All right. <laughs> What's going on, guys? About time. I was Jared. just typing on the screen. I'm here. <laughs> J Jared looks like a young uh, Harrison Ford. Well, I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah, man, it is. I'm like, a good looking man. I'm like, I'm like, look at who we got. We got Han Solo with us. So uh, <laughs> I was just talking about how uh, I was just about to reveal the fact that I sent you my sacks, which, yeah. which had a little smile. Uh, right here, a little recurve sharpening job. And then the rest of the blade was pretty good, except for where I dropped it on its tip, which is uh, a proclivity I have. So I sent this to Jared and with a stone and a free hand, he sharpened this, put a beautiful, beautiful, I mean, super crazy sharp edge on it. Oh, I shouldn't say hey, that. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> super, super <laughs> Jared sharp edge on it. I mean, it's like, I mean, even, I at, the, goes here. <laughs> even at the tip. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, I really oh, am no impressed problem. by the tip repair, by the tip yeah. repair. Very, very cool. That's a hard thing to do, at least for me and my skill and patience level. And uh, I applaud you for that. So guys, thank you both for coming on. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to have you both here. Uh, before we dive in, I want to find out what you both were carrying today. What did I carry today? Yeah, what you both carried. This well, is what a pocket I'm now. Yeah. Oh yeah. The Chavez. Chavez, but it's not the only thing it was in my pocket today because I usually have like three knives in my pocket at any given time. Yeah, so what else? What else were you carrying? Um, I had the Void in Damasteel from uh, this is Levon from the Knife Nut Pot Knife Nuts podcast. I was carrying this because I'm gonna do a review of it. So this mm -hmm. is the void. I talked with Brian Nadeau and he and I both agree that this needs the XLs will be better for guys with big hands like me. This mm -hmm. knife is just a little too small, but it's still a good knife. And uh, I had, of course, this. I carry this a lot because it's nice. It's a really ready, ready to use self-defense tool. Yeah, for wow. real. Well, since they put that sort of wave thing, Lindy Lou, lovely to have you. Thank you for coming. Lindy Lou. Since they put that little wave thing on there, which... I got to say is a little kind of awkward uh, as you I called actually, me today. I actually like this. I actually like this better than an actual wave feature. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. Is it more, is it more grabby? Would you say? I don't like the ones that are too grabby. This one, all I have to do is when I'm pulling out of my pocket, I just got to push forward a little bit and straight up and it catches. If you've got like an actual wave feature, it pretty much, it's going to wave every time. And I don't necessarily hey, want Dave. it to open when it comes out of my pocket. Yeah, certainly not. Dave, good to have you here, yeah. sir. The old you sword. Too. So you got multiple deployment. And and it is just actually, Caleb, lovely to have you, man. He's the He was the winner of... Uh, I've talked about that plenty of times. Enjoy that Terzuola book. Jared, what were you yes. carrying today? Okay, so earlier I was carrying the Quest Custom Gent um, earlier in the day. That's and cool. then uh, I actually switched it out halfway through the day, and I uh, was carrying my Svivi Picaro. Oh. Very big knife. I love this knife. I love this that. This knife is <laughs> one of the most impressive um Budget knives. Hey, I'm, James. I can even think of right now, in my opinion. The accent on that is great. It's a big knife. Though. I mean, it's a big knife, but it's so thin that it makes it to where you can do small jobs with it. And it's got the front choil, so you can creep up. And, I mean, you can do little tasks and big tasks hey, with Jared. it. But, yeah. So today, Jared was carrying the uh, Ferrum Forge Archbishop and the Stonefish. How oh. cool is that? Before I forget, Bob, I have yeah. this for you to review. It, it has to come back because this is going to be a giveaway on my channel. But this okay. is one of the stonefish. Uh, it's it's never really been used. It's still. Oh, sweet. Thank so you. you get a feel well, for it. What do I have permission to do with it? Uh, not that I do. I don't I'm not a hard user, but I mean, like, can I can I, I mean, noodle around I with it? Cut some cut some stuff. If, as long as I don't have to try and refinish it because it's uh, okay. a little bit long to try and do a, a retumble and stuff. Yes, I mean, I can always resharpen it. Yeah. I mean, I know a guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Can I open up uh, several cans of beans with it or something like No, okay. All right, I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> It'll do it. Plains Crafter, good evening. Lovely to have you. Uh, Jared, I wanted to ask you a question about the Civivi you were just holding up. So that yes, was sir. one that, was one that uh, they just came out with. Uh, I guess that was that's a 2020 knife. And I love yeah. the little, uh, there's a... There's a tip of the hat to um, Elijah Isham with the with the floating um, thumb stud in the middle yeah, of that. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Spirit yeah. Bay, Ryan, good to have you here, sir. So, how do, how does that all work for you? How is that working out uh, in terms of the hole and the stud? Are they used? You know, in concert? I, when, before I got it, I wasn't sure how I was going to like it, but I actually like it a lot because sometimes with holes on knives you know for spidey flicking or reverse flicking whatever you want to call it sometimes they're not the easiest to thumb flick mm -hmm. not always some of them are really easy but some of them aren't but this one since it's got the thumb stud there it's placed perfectly so you have like the perfect amount of leverage and so the thumb stud works amazing and then you got the reverse flick that works amazing and um since it's such a big knife you know and the the ergos are just fantastic Asked it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I love this thing. And especially because it's the blade is so thin, you know, you can bend it because oh it's so God. thin. But that's, but in a way, that's kind of the beauty of it because it's just such a slicer. It's obviously not a hard juice knife, yeah. but for, for, you know, long duty cutting or just, you know, any type of slicing, this thing's a beast. Dude, they, they keep outdoing themselves with thin. Uh, so this is, this is my one Civivi. It's the shredder. And uh, I was recently, I had the old, um, oh, what the hell is it called? The, the rustic gent uh, that I, yeah. I had from the pass around group. And, yeah. That was so thin. It's it, right. it is pretty impressive. I've never tried to bend this because, with my Herculean strength, I'm likely to break it, and and I don't want. It. So, but I love uh, how thin they make their knives. I mean, I think that it's. Uh, what, it's what, definitely Mike? a beautiful thing. It's definitely a beautiful <laughs> thing, especially when a lot of companies they have a problem with making edges too thick. Yes, we yes, thicker than they need to be. Especially the knives I, I, especially the knives. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but especially no, the no, knives I'm really drawn to. They all seem to be, you know, kind of, kind of thicker. So when I get something like, the, like the Civivi or what my EDC was uh, before I made a wardrobe change when the mail came, uh, yeah, was, was the uh, was the Yojimbo, and this thing is really thin and slicey, and it's always a pleasure to change. And uh, <laughs> he loves right. Thursdays. It's always a pleasure to change kind of types in midday. You know what I mean? Yeah, for uh, sure. 
So I'll, I'll get to my, my uh, knife wardrobe change a little bit later when well, we talk about it. You've got to be careful with that Yojimbo. That's, that's, like uh, that's like the civilian or the, uh, where's it at? My matriarch. Those aren't really EDC knives. They're, they're really easy to break like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you wouldn't want to do a lot of EDC tasks with this. I bought this for my wife and she never carries it. So it's oh, I, I did a video yeah, yeah, yeah. on that using it against ballistics gel a few weeks ago. Oh, really? The civilian? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, this is the matriarch. It's not uh, there we go. back. Right. This is the matriarch. It's not quite as thin as the actual civilian. Okay. Uh, basically, the this is uh, an Endura version. So it's gotcha. Very, it's gotcha. So it looks just like an Endura in the handle, yeah, but that? much thinner in the uh, it, it is shorter in the blade. I'll tell you what it uh, the civilian see. that I used against the ballistics gel it tore it up. Oh yeah. I bet. Did you did you have any tip problems? Anything breaking or bending? Obviously, no, no. We, I mean, we would have heard about that. Yeah, yeah. The ballistics gel. I mean, it was gel, and I knew better than to uh, to put it through anything like with bone because we were going to do it with meat at first, mm. but because of the times and everything, we couldn't find no big hunks of meat, and I didn't want nothing with bone because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You didn't want to the knife. That. So ballistics gel. We mixed it up. It wound up coming out really good. It was a nice big block. And then, uh, yeah, so we tore it up. So so Chad just uh, wrote us saying he was carrying the Killage today, uh, as well as the, uh, what was that? Oh, the Tepe Hornet. I know you're a big fan of that knife, uh, Jared, right? The Hornet? Got one right here. Got it right here. Uh, <laughs> the Killage is is interesting. Um, it, it's not exact. To me, the Killage is a, is a, is a really cool uh, knife. It's got maybe one extra design feature for me. I look at it and I'm like, hmm, something is a little extra, but I love that blade. Just like I love yeah. the sword, the killage. It's just a, a cool, uh, I guess it's kind of Middle Eastern. It's like a an upswept Hellhound Combat Troodon. I know that okay. uh, I know that Slicey is a big fan of that knife. Um, so I just want to get back to the civilian slash matriarch thing for a second. And if you do have one of those things and you want to use it, uh, you like that blade shape. I, I might recommend the, um, the black cold, talent. the cold steel black talent. Yeah. It's, it is quite robust. Actually, I used wow. this not too long ago in reverse grip to defend myself against Virginia creeper vine and uh, <laughs> doing some, doing some lawn cleanup. And actually, Dude, with, with this hook and the recurve, and if you if you're reaching for something, uh, uh, and you can, I bet this would be great for people who sail boats and stuff. They got to reach out for lines and pull them and cut them quickly. You got the nice recurve. You got the serration, so you can get a plain edge if that's your thing, and uh, and then you've got this like amazing sickle shape at the end, and that will capture rope and that will cut it. it crab Borg. Oh, Skiff Drifter. That's my little buddy, Nico, that you see in a lot of my videos. Oh, Nico. How are you, sir? Welcome. I change knives like women change dresses or shoes midday. That's interesting. So I, I have a little thing, and, and this is creepy, maybe. Alex, good to have you, sir. Um, lavender pants. Lovely to have you, too. Uh, I, I, have this, I have this thing where once I put the knife in my pocket, unless I'm getting a new knife uh, on that day, once I put the knife in my pocket in the morning, it rides with me all day to the end. And it's like, it's, it's like, it doesn't mean I don't have several other knives on me at any given time, but, but the, the one riding in my right pocket. <laughs> yeah. I got, I got plenty too, man, but, but, but you, you gotta, go. you gotta be kind to your knives. You don't want them to start uh, <laughs> thinking you're, I know it's silly and crazy. So I'm just going to stop talking about that. What is that? That is the Wii Minax. I'm carry, uh, Elliot let me start carrying one of the prototypes. And I like it so much. I was like, you know, you're probably not getting that back. I use it for work. That is sweet. What, what kind of tasks do you use that for at work, would you say? At work, because it's 20 CV and it's really thin. I use it for everything. Uh, cutting uh, Visqueen, cutting filter paper, cutting sprinkler, uh, sprinkler line, marking tubing. What's um, Visqueen? What kind this of material? Is, you do construction. That's that clear plastic you see them hang up on, on buildings. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And we cover, you know, we, we cover any of our spoils and stuff like that when you're doing digging at construction sites. It, it does, this does an excellent job at it, and you can open it with one hand. And it, it's got that little bit of a recurve. Yeah. Really lets you hey, Jay, good it. to have you. Go yeah, that, 
I usually carry the same knife all week. Is that what Jay said? Oh my God. And then I sell it or throw it away, get a new one. No, I'm just kidding. I, <laughs> I, I can't remember ever carrying, well, I can, but it was uh, before I got a little sick, uh, you know, buying all these things, but uh, you know, carrying the same knife all week. Uh, just doesn't God happen. Forbid, God me. forbid, right? Yeah. God forbid. <laughs> so with that, with that Ferrum Forge, um, you look at it and you know it's a Ferrum Forge. Uh, that's why I was like, what is that? You know, well, it's a Ferrum Forge. Oh, this it, isn't even a Ferrum Forge Pro line. Elliot designed this for We Knife Company. Okay, I take it back. What I mean is, it's designed by. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can definitely see his. But you it's can, it's you can it's, pick a Ferrum Forge design out of the lineup. Yes, you can. Yes, for you sure. can. But this one is the same but different. Whereas some of them seem the same and the same. To me, that one is unique and beautiful. And uh, I, you know, I'm a sucker for a recurve. And I actually like the choil on that one. Some sometimes choils, I'm like, I do too. Yeah, especially for like when you're working, you need to get up on it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and push through it. Hey, Jim, yeah. what was that last comment? I, I don't remember the name of the gent, but it flashed up there, and I just – I thought I saw something. This is awesome. Oh, I knew I saw something. Hey, Vinny. Good to have you, Vinny. Uh, we have a Vinny in my family. Okay, so open. Let's see. We're open. Let's talk about something. Let's talk about a new knife. Are you guys down for talking about a new knife coming out? Yeah, we got sure. the, the Kaiser Shard. It's a Dirk Pinkerson uh, design. And uh, what's that? I saw that. It looks yeah. like – it does. Okay. So I have an array of Warncliffs next to me and uh, I, I can't get enough. It seems, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll never, I'll never stray from the Bowie and the Tanto, but man, I got to say, I'm such a sucker for a Warncliffe. And when I saw this and saw the yellow and black one, now you're not going to find me car carrying a yellow knife often, but I look at that next to the black blade and that just looks sweet. Plus, it is tiny, and and it's it's like uh, it's like Finch Runtley size. It's like so small, it's acceptably small. You know what I mean? For me, like uh, the the three and three and a quarter is kind of small. Mm. Yeah, there, there was a guy over here. Yeah. Oh, there he is. You know, is well, he? I was going to show you because Dirk Pinkerton. I got the um the Kaiser Rogue. Oh yeah. That's cool. And then also Dirk Pinkerton, the um the Fire Ant. Yes. So it's basically like a mini me of the road. And oh, little guy. Um, this one's a little too small for me, but Kara really likes this. That, that's who it was for. You know, that's who it's for, for Kara. Yeah. But this one is a little more my size. And it's still a medium um size knife, medium to small size knife, but it just it gives you still a full grip. Yeah. And it's basically like a um an overbuilt utility blade. And it works so good. I use this thing on the job site so many times. And I mean, it's just, it's a workhorse. And even though I beat the, I mean, I beat mm -hmm. the tar out of this thing to the point to where it's like, this thing shouldn't even be surviving no more. The lock bar is still in the same place. The action's only gotten better. Yeah, it's been sharpened back a bit, but it, you would you know, aside from that, you would think it was a brand new knife. I mean, it's just, it, the way it feels, it's definitely built really strong. The back spaces are, are massive. It was definitely built for work. Like that's just the way I look at it. It's like an overbuilt utility blade. I love it. So you both, you well, okay. Before we get there, I'm going to do this so I remember. Uh, uh, Ryan said that it looked like a direct ripoff of a of a of a um, warning from Hinderer, and uh, yeah, maybe a little bit, but I feel like that swedge on top and and this swoop, the swale. I think looks literally coming from this swale here. And uh, yeah. I think I think maybe this angle is very similar, um, but it's it's well, funny that, that it just happened to have this nut. Well, you know, Bob, the original one, the original one did have that little swoop right there, oh. and then uh, then the there was like two different versions. The first one had a different clip, um, and then it had like a little swoop right there, just like that one. Mm -hmm. And then like the second version that came out, which was this one, had a different clip than even this one. This is a, a milled clip, but. Then they, they just brought the this part straight down and then, you know, the swedge. But, you know, that's kind of a common blade shape either way. You okay, know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it is. I, off anything. You can say it's knocking off a utility blade. Well, that's you for know, sure. I, you know what it looks like more like to me than a hinderer? It looks, do you guys remember the Carter, uh, the Carter Warney? 
that Carter Knives Warney that came out and it had the slender blade. It was a little bit more slender and it came down to a point. That's what the shard looks like more to me than than a hinderer. Hinderers have got a really aggressive Extensive. look. Yeah, they've got yeah. Like, an angled look. That looks more like a like the car kind of like the Carter. I can't think of the name of it. I, I redid one for a guy. I I, I finished it. But it I refinished hey, tier one. But it was it that definitely looks not it doesn't look anything like. I, you know what? I, I get I get ups I get frustrated when people. Oh, that's a copy. That's a copy. That's a copy. Yeah, Man, we've I been do too. Knives now for tens of thousands of years. Eventually, everything's a copy. It's everything's a copy. Yeah. Everything. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, no matter about, what, we, knives have been around for way too long. Everything's been borrowed. I'm not gonna say borrowed or stolen, but like people are inspired by things. People like certain things, and <laughs> if this is what you like, and that's the design you like, is you know as long as it's not the same thing and it actually has you in in it yeah then, look, oh, look at mike ripping off riyadh man right jeez. right <laughs> jeez no but i i see what ryan means though i mean it's the same thing okay uh we've been making paintings and well, for thousands of years and movies for it seems like thousands of years with some of the crap that's out there but the point is, it's always the same but different. Give me the same but different. Any book you right. read will, will have the same structure as the Odyssey. Give me the same but different. So, you know, there, there are... You, what, you get too different, nobody's going to want it. Yes. <laughs> because then it ain't going to be useful. That is true. That is we true. have figured out the blade shapes and handle, you know, your hand's only one hand. We only have one hand. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> a hand's only going to work one way, and then blade shapes, we've got them figured out. Yeah. So... I just need to figure out how to get them housed in my forearms, you know? I think you have to talk to the military about that. What'd you say? What, what, wasn't Wolverine, wasn't that a Canadian military program? I think yeah, you have okay. a Canadian right. military about that. Got to go to, the, go to Canada for a lot of stuff these days. Um, so uh, you were talking, okay, same but different. I think that this is a good time to bring this up. Yep. We, were, we were talking about these right before uh, we started rolling. And... Uh, I'm going to hold up the same oh, the one niche. you have. The niche, exactly. Yeah. And um, So Mike was saying beforehand, well, actually, well, Mike, I, you tell me what I you're saying. Uh, oh, so, yeah, um, Nick sent this to me. And Nick and I are friends. I've known Nick for a couple of years now. When he did the original design, I really told him that it, I didn't think it was going to sell. And I didn't see a real purpose for it. And it takes up a lot of pocket real estate and a bunch, so many bad things. That when he sent this to me, I was like, I don't know if I can give this a video because it might not help. It might actually hurt his business strategy. And then I was in the kitchen yesterday and I'd taken some migraine medicine and I was dopey and I was really tired. And I was about basically about half high and I was too lazy to turn around and grab a kitchen knife. So I pulled this out of my pocket and cut up the stuff I wanted for my sandwich. And I was like, oh, holy crap. This is better than any folding kitchen knife that has ever hit the market because the Spidey Chef is horrible. The KUF, as much as I like Leon Ma, was not very good. Neither one of them do what you want. They're too thick for what you want to do if you're doing kitchen tasks because you can't cut anything. It just mushes it. Um, it's got to be thin. Case in point, we took this on our trip to Big Bear because I didn't figure they'd have sharp kitchen knives. And you can't cut eggs with this. Oh, uh, really? Boiled eggs. It's too thick. It found a little niche. If you look at it, it's got a nice little area. You can mm -hmm. get clear up on it and treat it just like a kitchen knife. So now that's going to be my that's going to be my my point of the video is that unintentionally Nick has designed a better folding kitchen knife than anyone else that went at, went forward and marketed their stuff as folding kitchen knives. That's that's the spider co that spider co of the three is the worst in my opinion hmm. it does not do what you want for kitchen tasks nice broad blade allows you it's pretty thin stock to begin with broad yeah. blade with a long flat grind yeah it's super thin like it's almost yeah. not there yes uh uh nick I, I see that you're here and you're listening and and it's it's interesting because uh the thing that drew me to this knife uh, obviously it's a warren cliff but also is uh is I, I read that he was inspired by the Ojimbo. I too am inspired by the Ojimbo. I just think it's beautiful and very useful. And uh, I'm going to have to have one of you gentlemen fix that tip. But uh, when I got this, I was thinking in terms of, and I, I pull this out 
and I and I hold it like this. And I think, oh my gosh, like this, what a slasher this would be if you had to, you know. But also, man, uh, you know, I've been doing a lot of crafts with my daughters, uh, especially when school was still in. And and I was using my worn cliffs to cut a lot of paper out and cardboard. And this right here would be outstanding for that. So yeah, I think like Slicey was saying, this is a great EDC. Like you're saying, it's a great kitchen knife. And, uh, you know, I think it would be an outstanding self-defense knife. Hey, what's up, Brian? Speak of the devil. When you guys <laughs> are done talking about how awesome that is, I actually have a steel question for you guys that sharpen stuff. What's up, Slicey? How's it going? Wait, wait, what is that you're holding up, Mike? It's I'm trying to get it to show. I've told everybody since he came up with the prototype that I thought it looked like the crocodile from... Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, it does. And it looks like a crocodile from Peter Pan. That is funny. That is not inaccurate. <laughs> All right, wait, hang on. One, one second before before we wrap up this uh, and move on to the steel question. Because two, pro well, three, three different versions came. These two, yeah. and then this cool-ass prototype. I say cool-ass because it is obviously a prototype because there are things that weren't quite worked out in it yet. It's a cool-looking flipper tab. Uh, maybe a little bit, uh, uh, for me, a, a little bit uh, um, out of phase with the rest of the knife, but it's a cool flipper tab. Um, and then you have this nice little basher on the back, but it's kind of a, a problem. You I know. like the finish on that one the best, though. The finish. The blade finish on that was really cool. It's like a, it's like a tumbled, it's like a battle finish or something. Or, yeah. It looks um, like a hinderer working finish. Yes, working it's, finish. That's what I it's, think. It's the same finish I put for guys that don't want to have scratches on our blades. If I refinish knives for them, it's a, uh, it's a heavy blast and then a light tumble. Yeah, and it, it smooths it out, but it, the the blast, the blast looks darker and it doesn't show scratches because it's already yeah. pre-scratched. That's hey, always my option when I buy a hinderer if it's available. I get the working finish. Uh, hang on one second, lavender pants to pop in. You just go to www thenifejunkie.com slash join, as a matter of you fact. You should have made it sound like I was cool. But I wanted to, uh, hang on, uh, let, me just, let me just say this one last thing. The difference between these two knives is minimal, but, but for what Mike was talking about, this does make a definite difference. Aesthetically, I like the way this looks better, but yeah, man, for, for reaching the materials and not getting your knuckles and for, and for the maximum amount of uh, usefulness that you could get yeah. out of this, particular design i, can, I think this is the I can one see that. Both, oh, both are available cool nice nice Mitch just said you can get them. way to market it nick way hey uh it. nick there these are go. awesome thank you thank you nick for I, trusting I these with my hat around cool it. like jared what i had to flip my hat around cool like jared does. oh <laughs> see, so now both guys up here are, okay We're so on the bottom, they're on the top <laughs> brian uh, what is what is your steel question so uh, I've only had uh, one knife before in uh, 3V, and I never had to, like, sharpen it or anything. And I just ordered an MG20 uh, Demco mm. in, in 3V because he said 20 CV or 3V. I have a lot of 20 CV, so I just said 3V. Like, how hard is that to sharpen? I don't really have any experience with 3V. Do you guys have any experience with that? I've actually sharpened a lot of stuff in 3 and 4V. And mm -hmm. it's not really that hard to sharpen. Um, it sharpens up nice, but the thing is, if you're using water stones, it is going to rust. Uh, three yeah. V rusts super easy, even you mean while easy. you're sharpening. Yeah, while you're sharpening. Wow. As a matter of fact, Elliot has made some knives in three V, and if you try to ceramic coat them when you blast them, you have to rinse off the blast residue when you soak it in the ceramic. Sometimes from the time that you rinse it in the sink and try to get into the ceramic, it starts to rust. And then you have to go back and blast again yeah. because you've opened up the stuff. It really is prone to rust. And if they have an option of getting it coated, I would say that. But if you're going to sharpen most it, of all water, the then, I've done what has been coated. Yeah. And okay. most people do because they know it rusts. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're going to sharpen it, it, it sharpens really easily. If you're using water stones, just add a little bit of, uh, baking soda to your water. It lowers the pH. You don't get near as many problems with it. It's not acidic. It's basic. And if you keep it wiped down and then oil it immediately after you sharpen it, it should be fine. And then yeah, just, I, it'll turn your skin orange real I stuff. And oddly, Rochester, New York, like, yeah, we get a lot of snow. We get a lot of rain, but it's not a humid 
environment by any stretch of the imagination. It's uh, it's actually pretty dry because people complain about steels that never get rust on. Just and I I just don't. So and I use the EDCI pretty re religiously on anything that's not not stainless, and you know change you know, make sure to redo it every month or so. But, so I guess if sharpen it, maybe just do it in some kind of drier method that I'm not using the water stones and not worry about it. Well, I mean, like I said, just use baking soda, and that usually reduces it greatly the chance of it rusting. I'm you use the K me, don't you, Slicey? Huh? You use the K me, right? No, I got a Viper Sharp at the moment. Viper? Do you, you don't yeah. have diamond stones? I lost you. I've got yeah. every stone. I lost you guys for I got a every stone. I got every stone they make for the Viper Sharp, so. I would say if you have diamond, you can do it dry. I mean, yeah, that's what I would just try to do it dry. But I just want to know, because it's going to be a user, so I just want to know if you guys had any advice on it. I didn't know if it was a nightmare. Like uh, I never had a problem with it. I actually enjoy sharpening it. Um, I was going to say, yeah, it's pretty easy. Yeah. The, the only steel I have that is a nightmare that I send off to other people is S90V. That's, huh. I call that steel someone else's problem. S90V. <laughs> I send it off to somebody else. Let me ask you guys this. Okay, so you were talking about how shit hey, the Spider Co. Uh, Spidey Chef is. I like it, and I keep it around for the design and, like, how beautifully it is aged. Um, yes, well, that's how I do things, Mike. Yes. I, 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 I'm just I'm vehemently disagreeing. <laughs> Dissing and agreeing. agreeing. Dissing and agreeing. I'm definitely agreeing. <laughs> I'm so on my side for this one. Are you okay? Well, if uh, I could keep one knife, it would probably be the Clady Show. I, I am, I am thinking of doing this, and and just uh, clipping it a little bit. But I'll never do that. Uh, but yeah, my, I've done, done it before. You have seen that guy on Instagram that uh, that does all those knife chops, didn't you? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think I have. I mean, it, this is such a, a pleasing looking knife, and with a with a little sharper, pointier blade it would be more pleasing to me uh, i don't carry it or use it much i occasionally use it in the kitchen and then remember oh i have kitchen knives uh, but my question to you is this lc 200 n i and and i'm decent enough you know i can get i can get the uh, knives sharp enough not as sharp as you fellas but uh i've always had a hard time with this blade like i can never quite get it that sharp uh using the same methods that i can get other uh steel sharp with what's the deal with this steel yeah, I, you know, I can't even speak on it because every bit that I've ever sh I've sharpened up a lot of LC200, and it's always been fine for me. That's um, what I hear from everybody. So, I mean, I, I, I can't imagine what would be wrong with that. Unless, have you sharpened it? Um, is it? Oh, have you only sharpened it once, or? Uh, yeah, I mean, no, I've, I've, uh, I've, I, I can't remember. I've, I've gone into it a couple of times, been like, no, now this is the time I'm better now. And I'm going to make this sharper. And uh, I don't know. I've just always had difficulties. Hey, what's up, Nick? How you doing? Hey, how's it going? Down there. Good. It's very nice to meet you. <laughs> you too. Hey, Mike, Jared, what's up? So LC200, um, in the Spidey Chef, the thing that I've noticed, Bob, is that knife is a little bit thicker behind the edge for what you would want for a kitchen knife it could be just the <laughs> i just don't like whatever he I says from here on out he's wrong about <laughs> i just don't like that design i really don't but they are a little bit thicker um yes it is it is the same as z finite and it takes a really good edge but on something like that, where it's a little thicker, maybe thinning your angle down will get you where you want. Uh, my friend Matt stopped by yesterday with a knife, and he's like, hey, man, what's yeah, up with the knife? That cardboard, all it did was rip. And I was like, this knife is sharp. It's just too thick. Interesting. And it's, it was one of your favorite ones there, Bob. It was a uh, super karambit. And I was oh. like, yeah, it's just too thick to do what you want it to do. For, for cutting, like if you needed to cut it for self-defense, yeah, it's, it's it work. But it's not going to work for what you want it to do, which is it's too thick for that. Look at this. Look at this. It's a <laughs> gathering of eagles, people. Lavender <laughs> pants. Good to have you, wow, man. Wow. What's up, lavender pants? No, not. <laughs> not much. We're just hanging out, talking knives. And uh, actually, um, well, I can thank you in person now for the super chats. Thank you. They are, they're greatly appreciated, man. You've, uh, I, you started a trend a couple of weeks back, and that was a good trend, and I appreciate that. You deserve it, man. 
Uh, well, thank you. Thank you, man. Um, so, Nick, it's a pleasure to have you here right in front of me with these three knives that came here today. And, uh, you know, since you're with us and since I have these beauties in front of me, let me ask you, uh, I, I can tell where the clip was inspired from. But tell me about the rest of the knife. Tell me about tell me about what you were going for and why you decided to make this knife. Yeah, so um, really it started just as a conversation between some knife buddies. We're kind of in this long-standing Instagram chat, but we were talking about possibly designing a knife to have a custom maker kind of put one together for us that we maybe could have made just for a small group. And I'm not really someone with a design background, but we we're throwing around the idea of something with like a K-tip or a reverse tanto, which is traditionally not a blade shape that I usually like. Uh, but I just kind of took the paper, started sketching out a bunch of random stuff, I uh, stumbled upon that blade shape with those ridiculous proportions and just kind of took it from there. I knew I wanted something that was really utilitarian just because I work in an office and I don't really live a super tactical lifestyle, but you know, tall grind, thin edge, those types of things usually appeal to me. And then it just kind of went off from there making that work. <laughs> well, uh, apparently uh, um, you two are much better looking than Brian, and so he's he's happy you jumped out. Brian, thanks for coming in, man. Always appreciate it. Always a pleasure to see you and uh, and get your take on stuff. Um, so, how were you inspired? Well, let me ask you this: What other knives are in your uh, collection that you love that kind of pushed you in this direction? Yeah. So, first and foremost, I think I'm most inspired by like Fair and Forge designs. I uh, like Mike. I've kind of spent some time hanging out with. Uh, Fair and Forge collected a lot of Fair and Forge knives and custom knives, and uh, I just generally like their really minimalistic, kind of straightforward approach to design. Some of the features, like the lock bar insert on the ingress, are almost identical to what you'd see on a custom Fair and Forge knife. <laughs> oh, oh, we're going to have stuff going on in our individual windows. This yeah, is like, yeah. This is so, like the old Hollywood squares. <laughs> yeah, right. I like the way you pointed to me before, by the way. Um, so to me, uh, uh, Yojimbo comes to mind for sure, but not not uh, not overly much. But this handle, man, is so comfortable. This setup is is just right. So um, I, I I am really looking forward to now. I what is the protocol? What is the etiquette? I should say when someone sends you prototypes. I mean, I I I have no plans to carry it outside of the house. Uh, but besides that, what what are your stipulations? Because I haven't really been loaned prototypes, and I don't want to jack it up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely you should always ask the person who's loaning it to you. I think it's going to be different just based on the designer. But mm -hmm. in this case, I mean, feel free to cut test with it. I mean, take it to a bunch of cardboard. Obviously, it's not an outdoor knife, so I wouldn't try right. you know, batoning any pieces of wood or anything. But okay. you know, definitely use it as much as you can for what it's meant to be used for. Yeah, it looks like a cardboard slayer, a slayer of cardboard. It's I, it's, uh, I actually tested it for that today, Nick, and uh, yeah, it does. Like, I really was, I wanted to give, I want to give it a good video, and I so I took it out and had a bunch of Amazon boxes to cut down. I was like, oh wow, this yeah. really just screams through cardboard. Oh yeah, I, so, so I, like the, I have to sharpen your prototype for you. I feel like the biggest <laughs> competitor right now to this knife is. Uh, XL Sheepdog, you know, people are talking about how big and thick and how easily it cuts through uh, cardboard. I think people are making those comparisons between that knife and this. So, so you're saying between the XL Sheepdog and and this? Yeah. So, that's like, what is the most ultimate cardboard destroyer? Yeah, I've had I've seen that conversation happen. That is funny. Well, oh, excuse me. Woo, that came out of nowhere. Lavender pads. What what is your collection like? What kind of knives are you into and what what's you know, what what brought you to this hobby? Um yeah, my collection's all over the place. Uh speaking of prototypes, I do have a lot of prototypes. I've got stuff from like Derek Costa, um, several prototypes from TRM. Mm -hmm. Um works, the model one. I got one of his prototypes. I don't know. I just, I just meet people and see what they're into and what they're passionate about. They get excited to talk to me about what they're passionate about and, and share that with me. And next thing I know, I'm just, <laughs> and I have a whole like, collection of them. Yeah. Hey, uh, do me a favor. 
are you looking at me with your phone? Are you talking to yeah. us through your phone? All right, turn your phone horizontally because I think your speaker might be covered up a titch. Oh, there we see. go. Yeah, that sounds a little bit better. Um, so, do you you have a wide collection of uh, of? You said you have a lot of prototypes. Yeah. I wow, that's cool. So, so I get, I guess, I mean, so having Nick's prototypes in hand. And it, it's really cool to see the difference between the three of them. And uh, actually, I want to ask you, Nick, uh, uh, what the which design you're going to settle on. I know I'm pretty sure it's not the flipper. Um, and but between the two of these, this this was my favorite at first. And mind you, I've had them for three hours or so. But this was my favorite. Or no, this was my favorite at first uh, because I'm all about the looks, and I love the way this area looks right here. I'm sorry, I can't do that. I love the way this area looks right here. And then uh, when Mike came on and we were talking before we started rolling, he was talking about how, how he was using this uh, in the kitchen and how in a pinch grip, this is just the perfect, perfect setup because unlike this one, uh, you're not, you're only contacting blade on the cutting board. Whereas with this, you're going to be hitting the, um, the bottom here. So yeah, is, sure. it, is it is it gauche to ask you which one you're going to go with, or is this for us to find out? No, definitely. It's uh, pretty straightforward. So the one that has the, the holes in the tang of the blade, that's going to be the final version. Uh, okay. The other two are basically just different steps of the prototyping process. So the one with the, the stonewash blade was the actual first prototype that I had done with Wii going back in 2018. Uh, the other one with the slightly bigger guard is actually the second generation prototype. And there's some differences between that and the last one that maybe are a little, a little harder to notice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's right. Exactly. Until I, I figure those like out for myself, that. until I figure those differences out myself, I won't, I won't make the video, but I won't hold on to them too long. Don't worry. Oh, Nick, uh, I know it's been a year, but I still haven't quite figured out the differences. So uh, <laughs> uh, no, that, that will not happen, but um, yeah, it's, it's, well, if it's, there is any question, you can always hop on my site. I'm pretty clear on the projects page in terms of the prototyping process, kind of all the changes that were made between each prototyping phase. So you can kind of dig into a lot of this really small design changes that had to be done. Okay. And also uh, these, are they lightning holes or style slots? <laughs> Definitely lightning holes. Uh, pretty much everything on that knife serves a function. I don't think there's anything on there that doesn't need to be on there, it doesn't serve a purpose. So that really was there to lighten the load in a really wide part of the tang that's you know full thickness, it's not ground at all. And then to also just improve the balance so that it still sits right in the finger choil where you want it. Uh, you got two compliments in the last comments. Uh, uh, Joe, uh, um the knife whisperer thinks it's an awesome, uh, you did a great job. And then nice. the person before that also, uh, sending you kudos and, uh, Thanks. Appreciate it. yeah, man, it's, it's cool. I've been seeing it around. I know, uh, Ray, uh, from everyday city carry was just, man, in love, in <laughs> love with these knives. He put so many cool pictures of them, uh, up online. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. I cool. Appreciate you checking it out. What's that? I appreciate you checking it out. I mean, you oh, yeah. And actually, Alex has one that he's going to be doing for review, too. So it should be interesting. Right on. Well, you did it the right way. Now, uh, who did the prototypes? We Knives. So We Knives is doing all the manufacturing for the Ingress. You know, I think I think they're starting to get the hang of it. You know, I think they're starting to figure out how to make a knife, man. So oh, yeah. uh, I think you, you may. <laughs> well, that would not be a good idea to go to them. <laughs> Jesus. These oh, yeah, they do great stuff, and they're, they they're really good at communicating throughout the process. They have their own team of engineers that are, you know, right on top of design and really helpful when it comes to, you know, manufacturing constraints and everything like that. All right, so let me ask both Nick and Lavender Pants. Uh, do you mind if I ask your first name, Lavender Pants? Who is frozen on screen, I think. I would say either that or he's very, very stoic. Yeah, he's like, no, I'm not going to tell you my first name. <laughs> Uh, so, um, Nick, what were you carrying today? I was, I did a pocket check before you popped on. And yeah, so you know. all of my prototypes of the Ingress are loaned out right now. So normally I would be carrying that. So for now I'm carrying my skiff culprit. Oh, what a poor guy. Oh, I'm so, I'm oh, sorry to hear that, man. Uh, That's a beauty. Oh. I, like to, I like to show Nick every time I get a chance God. because he got rid of his brass inlaid master mm -hmm. blaster. <laughs> so, like anytime i'm just like hey you remember having one of these Did you yeah, yeah i do still miss that night. do you remember how sweet it was hey what's up Mr. Just so good Look to have you got one of these 
Look who got one of these. Look how hey. VIP I am. I am VIP because I got one of these. Everybody's got one but me. <laughs> <laughs> the people that matter have them, Neves. Yeah, exactly. Really exactly. Matter. I've got it. <laughs> Guys, oh. this night, everybody stop what you're doing. Go to Kickstart and get one. This thing is in freaking credible. I love it, this night. I've been watching the whole show and I respect everybody's opinion, but my personal opinion, this thing is an EDC monster. This thing's badass. I I really like this knife. As a I matter of like fact, I don't think he's gonna get this one back. I think this was his personal knife, but uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I told Nick, I told Nick that I was trying to find a way to do a video, and like I said, I found I found where it really really works well, and it completely changed. It, it's still not like in the video. It's definitely going to be one of those things, Nick, where you hear me say it's not a knife for me, but it's a very good knife. It's not something that like because of the amount of pocket real estate and it just really doesn't serve. I'm an outdoors guy. Yeah, I'm a, I'm, I'm a fixed blade kind of guy. The closer you can get to a fixed blade in a folding knife the better for me. But I mean, finding where it really shined, I was like, oh, wow, that's really a niche. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I honestly think that it for people need to get to this thing in their hand because before I got this thing actually yeah. in my hand, I like I liked the idea behind it when I saw pictures of it. But now that I have it in my hand, I mean, the fidget factor is un freaking believable it just fires out and there's so many details i mean look at the way he does his sharpening choil is freaking yeah. unbelievable it comes right to a thin edge right at the end stuff like that just so today uh i commented uh, alex lock bar insert everything i really like it Alex, uh, on your com on your picture today, I commented. I said, "I love that knife, but it looks like a pocket hog." And then it showed up at my door today, and I put it in my pocket. And oddly and weirdly, and I'm not quite sure how, because it's it's pretty broad. It 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 did not it did not hog my pocket as I thought it would. It's not that much wider than a well, it's it's a little bit wider than a Yojimbo, but for some reason, maybe it's the harpoon. I don't know what it is, but it nestles in my pocket, like, and I can still reach down in there for all of the money I have at the bottom of my pocket. Uh, so, where did you get that? <laughs> I don't know. I'm still looking for it. You're married, right? How do you have it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, nicely done. Nicely done. Uh, let's see. A folder that looks like a fixed know. blade I'm is the Wii Scopio. I can't think of that one. No screws on, no screws on the I'm sorry, that's, I was just saying, I read that and I was like, the Wii Scorpio. I can't remember. Is it Scorpio or Scopio? Scopio. I, I remember talking about it on the supplemental. I don't remember the show. Uh, I mean, I don't remember what it is. Uh, let me see. I'm going to look it up right now. Scopio. Oh, English. Okay, it's an Italian word. I'm not going to get it too far into it but uh oh my good gravy okay so mike just held up something special what do you have in your hand there sir i have got levon from the knife nuts podcast personal void hmm. and uh this is going to get a video review but uh the, the uh the thing is i was talking with brian they because I, I like brian and brian and i talk fairly often I, he and i were texting back and forth he says that for me, because I told him, I was like, I don't know if I even want to do a video about this because I don't know how well it's going to go because it's it doesn't feel comfortable in my hands. He says there's an Excel version. So he says, do the video, just, you know, find the points that you like about it. And uh, so now that I've got it, this, I think that the Excel version is going to be great. And deployment on this thing is amazing. If you guys haven't seen a void, like putting your finger in the hole, it almost opens just putting your finger in the operating hole. Nice, big nice big uh it's a family show mike no. <laughs> that is that is a it nice is aperture right here and the way it sits so close by the time you get your finger up in it it's already you can see it like putting my finger in it pushes it out of detail and it just flies open so the xl is going to be a really good knife when Super. that oh two not uh, two peas in scopio uh I, I will look that up in a second but when that when that came out, when the void, uh, hey guys, real quick, I'm yeah, gonna, I'm gonna want to say a quick hello. good to have you, sir. Thanks for showing up, man. Uh, um, 
what the hell was I saying? Oh, when the void came out, it was hot on the heels of the arch nemesis, which to me is the most beautiful and perfect looking folding knife of all time. I don't have one. Wish I did. Chad loves his void. And, and now that I see it and I'm not comparing it in the same light as what I see as the perfect uh, folder. Well, now I really like the void. And then the thought of having an XL who's typing like a madman in the background. I, I think, think the was 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 I think it was turbing microphone. <laughs> so, uh, Hey, Lavender, Lavender Pants, we cannot hear you. We can't hear you, man. Uh, is your mic muted on your phone or something? Sometimes I have. And now, oh, geez. See if you can put some headphones in. That's sometimes my help. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Try the headphones. Um, I think he's got a pair of headphones in. Oh, yeah. He does. Does. Oh, then take oh. them out. <laughs> yeah, take your headphones out then. Or unplug well, actually, the headphones. headphones. So it, 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 it we'll, we'll turn guess. them off. See if that helps. All right, guys. So I want to find out. I, I, want, I want to start talking a little bit about sharpening before we find out what what you all. Uh, oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. I will check that out sh shortly. The Scopio. I, Mike Emler. So you, you came on the podcast recently. We talked for an hour. It was great. And you described to me um, in words, and I am a male, so I am more visual. And uh, you described to me <laughs> in words. This sort of, this is how I picture it. Wait, wait. Yeah. I was ready. Rocking back and forth, kind of like in a zone. And you're kind of doing this. Is it that, is that what happens? Is that like when you get a knife to sharpen, like, like when you get this knife to sharpen, how are you going to do it? Uh, so basically I would, uh, I would take it and I would find, I mean, each knife has got its own angle and I, it sounds weird, but like, when you address the stone, the knife is going to tell you what angle it wants to be sharpened at. Mm. You can just feel it. And so what you do is you basically, you take your stone, you find that angle and you kind of re you, you reprofile it down to that angle. And from there, I would take my stones and well, I'll just show you on this. Mm -hmm. I'll take my stones and I have a rocking motion that I do where I'm rocking the blade and I'm rocking mm -hmm. the stone. And it gives me like several different angles per pass. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm creating a convex that way by, instead of having a V grind, I have multiple angles mm. on each pass. And they're not all the same. So as you're passing on the next pass, you're knocking the shoulders off that you put on before. And so by the time you get to a fine stone, you've knocked all those shoulders off and it's one continuous radius. And that's exactly what you're describing, exactly it. I'm doing that and I'm moving the stone and I'm moving the knife ever so gently and you can hear the different changes yeah. in the angles and I'm knocking those shows. And basically that's all I do. And I'll sit and I'll, I'll watch, I'll get a box of knives that a customer sends me and I'll take my phone and I plug it in and I put on a movie that I've seen a bunch of times, usually Blade Runner. Oh, because it's something that's just background noise. I can kind of focus on that because if I focus on the stone and the knife, I lose my apex. I've done it that way so many times that Dang. I'm, I can, if you watch my YouTube videos, Neves, you see some of my YouTube videos. Oh, yeah. Times, I'm not yeah. looking at people like, dude, you're not looking at the knife. And I've got a one inch stone in my hand and I'm talking to the camera like this and I'm not paying any attention. And that's where going I'm, past his hand. That's, the, that's <laughs> where I'm the best is when I have lost. I, I just kind of take my eyes out of the mix and let my ears and my hands do the work. You can hear when you apex an edge. You can hear the chain. Yeah. You can hear uh -huh. when you've removed all the scratch pattern. If you go from a 400 grit stone to a 600 grit stone, you hear a shift in the change. Okay, I've got that scratch pattern pretty much gone. Let me look and see if there's any low spots where maybe the previous grit was disguising that low spot because the grit was hard high enough to get down in that low spot, but it hasn't completely removed it. Mm -hmm. Usually that happens when you go from like a 250 and then when you get to like a 600, so a couple steps up. Right. So that's when you start seeing it. You're like, okay, I have to go back down to maybe a 400 or back down to the 250 and reprofile that that little low spot out. And then when you start, when you think you've got it where you want, then you start looking for little micro chips that you might've missed that you need to go back down from like a thousand to a 400 and just take them out. And you can feel those little areas that haven't quite got the yeah. same, could, and you don't wanna do it hard. You just, I'm just barely touching it. And I do all that stuff by feel, I'm feeling, 
So every time like you're in a video where people are like, dude, you're always fondling nice. I'm feeling the edge to see if I feel any inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. Cause at this point I can feel with my thumb better than I can see it with my eyes, whether I've got any inconsistencies, even with that little microscope I've got, I've got knives that I've looked at under the microscope and not seen it and then go back with my thumbnail and with almost no pressure, like, yep, there's huh. a little chip in there. Yep. I missed it. I couldn't see it on a microscope, but I definitely can feel it. You know, I actually learned that from you and I do the same thing now too. You, uh, I actually got that from you, um, using my nail, the tip of my nail and running it down because you can feel the, like something like, and I'll sit there and try to look for it too. Can't see it. Can't see it at all with my eye, but I can feel it. And so then that tells me, you know, like that I need to get that part out or that I got a little chip in there or something like that. Even but, just like even going through the grip pattern, just making sure that I got a consistent grip pattern all the way up. And I can tell yeah. um, it's, and then to switch. It's 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 funny because uh, hang on, uh, let me interrupt you real quick. And, and I want to get back to this uh, niche comment, too. Uh, but I want to your two processes, processes, processes seem very different. And actually, Jared, I know you, you got a lot from Mike uh, in, in kind of figuring out your own method. Um, yep. So how much for you is about feel? Uh, because when when last time we had you on, we were talking about you were talking about how you you gauge the knife with your finger yeah. or against yeah. the uh, that seems to work too. But it seems like a very different process. Yeah, uh, it's, it, my my process is a hundred percent different. But you know, but the the feeling and the sounds and there's still a lot of things to sharpening that's going to be the same. And, right. you know, speaking about the sounds, you know, for a long time, I tried to listen for the sounds, you know, and try to listen because I heard a bunch of other sharpeners talk about that <laughs> and, you know, I couldn't figure it out. And then it just took so long of just sharpening and sharpening and sharpening until finally, like it just became like a part of it that you actually could listen to it and hear the little differences in the sounds and actually realize what you're doing or when to flip, when to switch sides. But that's all like, it's just time. Like nobody can just grab yeah. it, grab it and listen, you know, and cause it's very subtle, you know, but, um, but no, yeah, I do. I, um, I gauge on the stone with my finger so that I'm holding mm -hmm. the exact same angle because one of the um, hardest things for a freehander is, is getting a consistent angle. You know, and then holding that same angle to the next stone and then to the next stone. So I gauge it with my finger so that it's 100 percent free hand. So I'm not using a guide or anything like that. And I do that. And I've gotten good at it to where now I still do that, but I don't do it the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, you don't because, need to you know, with all the sharpening I do, I would I wouldn't even have fingers. But I but I lightly let my my finger go across the stone with the knife. As you know, I'm bringing the you know my edge across the the stone, so it's kind of like a self guided system, so that I can get a, a perfect angle and a consistent angle. Mm -hmm. Mike, what what were you just commenting? Well, I was going to say I didn't mention it in the, we. I kind of I, I don't know how I forgot when we did the podcast. We were talking about the things that where I learned all a lot of this the 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 proper way to use water stones. The mm -hmm. way I learned it. Yes, I was taking Japanese sword, the Japanese swords arts. I've got my swords here that I used to do Japanese Kenjutsu with and things mm -hmm. like that. But my father-in-law is a master carpenter in Japan and all of his tools are here. Oh. And so when I started really getting into knife sharpening, he goes, well, this, these, kore no stone, kore no itsu, iru yo. you need these. These are the best way to sharpen a lot of steels. And the, the fine, fine edge that you get on those were amazing and then he started teaching me how to sharpen tools and he actually when we still lived close relatively close like an hour drive away i would go up and he would have me sharpen his tools because he was uh, pretty much retired he was like an inspector at that point and he'd have me sharpen his tools and he tested me he goes wow you that's good that's good and i'm like really like you you are a so cool. sharpener. you're telling me my edges are good and that's when i knew that i had figured out how to use water stones and I told him my, my thought on make, maybe making doing that on, on knives. And he goes, he, he said, don't do it on an expensive knife. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Caleb was just on saying he doesn't have the patience for it. Caleb Townsend said he doesn't have the patience for freehand sharpening. So the wicked edge is my crutch. He says, how, how, how do you feel about the wicked edge? 
I, I think uh, just like with any sharpening system, it's it's still going to take knowing how to sharpen to an extent. You know, even with a fixed system, uh, yeah, it makes it a lot easier. And you know, it it holds the angle for you. But knowing how to to look for your grip pattern. And, you know, find the burr and, you know, I'm not saying that you can't get a, a sharp edge from it, but you got to still know how to sharpen to, to get a really good edge. Even I want, I've seen people ruin knives on those systems. Um, yeah, I had yeah. damaged yeah. a knife one time on a system. Big I think I showed all the hell on a system because of one little rookie mistake. Mm -hmm. I mean, the tiniest rookie mistake. So, yeah, I, I got I, I a lot of business from guys that have that have wicked edges they're like dude i got like i really screwed up i got this really expensive knife in and i did it on a wicked edge and can you fix it and i'm like <laughs> yeah i mean it's gonna cost you the fixer hey lavender pads good to have you back well, you can, it over on a can you hear me edge? now there you are I can hear you now, oh yeah. my gosh there you go <laughs> yeah here you go kme it should be dummy proof right but nope there's a rounded tip on yeah. mine yeah TRM, I, madam. I got yeah. my, I got mine, my, out. I got my KME thinking it was the magic elixir. Uh, by oh, the way, yeah. I was fine without it. You know, I was fine with <laughs> my uh, Spyderco sharp maker, which I'm sure makes all of you bristle. But you know, it was fine with me keeping my things sharp for a guy who never uses his knives anyway. Made bug out, rounded that tip out too. Oh, but but the Same big thing. problem with those guys is that you're, <sighs> you're not, if you're freehand sharpening, you're looking down at the stone. And yeah. I can see when I approach the end of the stone, sorry, right. I can see when I approach the end of the stone. And even if I'm not looking, I can feel that I'm getting close to the end of the stone. Now you flip that over. That's where you're at with a fixtured system. And you can't really see that. And, uh -huh. it, and you drop right off the tip. That's yeah. right. That's, 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 that's when the good parts on TV start happening too. And I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I just made a butter knife. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. A British. <laughs> oh man. Well, yeah, I, I, so I have a, uh, a super fine Spyderco stone that my brother gave me years ago, like way before I was sharpening my knives. And then <clears throat> when I recently jacked up the tip on something, uh, it, it may have been this, but this is the same treatment I gave it. I, I <laughs> This is a Tanto, actually, if you look oh. at it. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I dropped it as usual. <laughs> and, and, and I didn't want to take the time. This is 20 CV. I don't have the, the, the chops to actually bring the edge all the way up to make it a worn cliff again. So I was like, let me just make this tip a, a, a tanto before I send it out to someone to <laughs> you shake your head, but it's very useful. <laughs> what is that? I don't know if you guys noticed I switched because I realized I wasn't even wearing I did. that shirt. I did. <laughs> I, like, I saw oh, that I'm when you came back. And I thought I it was so nice too. <laughs> You, do you see the difference in the point on this one, Bob? Wait, put your hand behind it, if you will, uh, behind the tip. Yeah, all we can see is your face. It's focusing on your face. Yeah, put yeah. your hand behind it and uh, and then now pull it back from the camera just a titch. All right, there you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I see the difference. Yeah, Jared did this one. <laughs> I was like, I was like, yeah, man, you've gotten a lot better. Good, you've you've worked it out. Yeah. <laughs> you have. I think, I think that's the best strategy moving forward is just, hey, I got a knife that you might be able to review, Jared. You know, yeah, you know, anytime. Man. Well, I, I think, pants has, has been there for uh, for our channel since the beginning. He's done so much <laughs> for our channel. I I can uh, you know I couldn't thank you enough. I'd do anything for you, brother. I appreciate it. He's done a lot for this channel too. I mean, like recently, and I, I appreciate that too. Lindy Lou, haha, that was a good day when I used the KME and didn't round my tip. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I think um I think from this conversation, uh, I have decided that this is gonna go to Mike. Mike, I would love you to take this and 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 make this. I know you despise the knife, and so this is part of your chore. It's like a it's, it's like a labor, you know, it's like a labor. <laughs> Um, the labors of Hercules. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and you might and, fall back in love with it, Mike. Yes. I never was. I, you got to be in love with something before you can fall back in love with it. <laughs> Kane says, Bob, <laughs> maybe stop getting warnies. It will not happen. <laughs> will not happen. I love it. However, um, Nick's uh, Nick's warnie looks like it's 
it's almost drop proof, but I'm not going to say that nothing is drop proof, but uh, yeah. So Mike, I'm going to send this to you and I would love it if you could give it your super sweet edge. And then also, I think we're going to talk about doing that, man. And I, I making it stabby. That. I'll carry that, it. Stabby. Um, the thing is like, I would, I would recommend that we refinish the entire blade. You might lose your markings a little bit, but I, I would marks. say we should, uh, we should do it like a uh, really fine gunmetal tumble on that. Um, uh, I will put this in your hands. A finish like this. Yes. I think Ooh. that would look good. It's a, it's a polished mat. That is gorgeous. Yeah, man. That is really, who did that for you, man? Oh, That's good. nice. I did. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, I, cause I want to send it. Back to you. <laughs> this is yours next here. I'm not touching this. Oh, what's that? that S90 V. What is that? Oh, no. Maximum. Maxima? Yeah. yeah. With, with chips on the edge. Oh. Mike, Mike do, you, do you not take Maximet or do you just prefer not to take it? Steel. I don't think it should be in knives. I honestly don't think it makes any sense to have a steel that you cannot sharpen in the field. It <laughs> makes zero sense. If I have to completely buy a, a specific set of things to sharpen, then it's worthless to me. Hmm. You know what? You know what I can sharpen in the field? I can sharpen this. I can sharpen this on a cinder block and strap it on a piece of wood and then strap it again on a piece of newspaper and go right back to whatever I was doing. I can sharpen this on a ceramic cup and, and do a fine hmm. sharpening. on. The, I can sharpen on the bottom and then finish it on the top where it's really fine and come out with a razor sharp screaming edge. I can sharpen this on a car window. You know what I can't sharpen on pretty much anything? Maximum. Maximum. <laughs> it's mainly tungsten. It's Diamond beautiful. tungsten, yeah. Okay, so let me ask you this. Tier one hates Maximet. Let me ask you this. Is uh what's what's the purpose of it? Why are or, or, no, not what's the purpose of it, but why are people so hot on it? Is it just because it's so extreme? And they it, do such extreme stuff that they need it, extreme. If you were just opening <laughs> packages or cutting paper with this casually, I mean you'd probably get sick of the knife and throw it away or give it to someone before it actually got dull. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's the appeal of it is it can potentially never need sharpened. But, How did you get the chips? Oh, I got it that way from a previous user. This is used. Oh, I mean, it's still <laughs> razor sharp. It. They sold it. It has chips in it. So it's, right. it's, so it is going to be chippy because it's extra hard. It's because so hard. It yeah. Holds an edge for, oh gosh. Well, the, the whole point of Maximet was Maximet was meant to be. I have a friend that works in machine shop, and he told me this. They bought Maximet bits. Maximet was designed to be a replacement for tungsten carbide bits. The carbide <clears throat> bits that were that were sharpenable, and they came with a whole sharpening system, which was like a diamond wheel that you'd sharpen this, and you could extend the life of your bits. But they never even really worked for that because what they had was problems with chipping and things like that, even yeah. sharpening. Mm -hmm. Now they're. There are some guys that have made knives in it that are great. Uh, Triple B handmade, Big Brown Bear. He makes really super thin blades that have got crazy heat treats, and he does them in Maximet and Rex 121, but they're purpose built for that steel. Hmm. And you can sharpen them because, like, right. a, like his knives are paper so thin thin. on the edge. Like, you can yeah. watch him, he rolls them. He does videos where he rolls the edge of the knife across a piece of uh of brass copper tubing and you can see the the edge just flex because oh. of one the heat treat and two how thin it is those knives are great for that like a kitchen knife in maximet or a trapping knife that he makes in maximet could be amazing but you've got to have a way to sharpen it in a field so you're looking at something that's like uh the 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 cbn stones that he makes so they're vitrified cbn or you've got to have like the matrix diamond stones and none of those things are cheap. Right. And for the average Joe, like I literally have thousands of dollars of sharpening material, sharpening equipment, just in stones, I have thousands of dollars of stuff. I can sharpen almost any material that comes in, but to take something in Maximet that has a factory grind on it, and it's a thick blade and it's all chowdered up from the previous owner. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tap out and say, Hey, you need to send that back to the company for sharpening. Wow. Because if they if they sharpened it to begin with, they can sharpen oh. it again. It's just it's not a 
It's not yeah. a viable for me. The amount of time it would take to sharpen that knife, I can't charge what it costs. Doesn't make it worth your time. It doesn't make it worth my time. So it's metal that was made to cut Dave. metal. Dave, hey, what's up, David? Hey, there you go. <laughs> How's it going? Good to see you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. The room. Hey, QSP. Let, let me let me Love thank you that. in person. Thank up, you Dave? for all you do with that pass around group. That is the coolest thing ever. And I know I'm way yeah. late to that party, but I mean, the fact that that I've got these knives that we were talking about earlier in hand today, yeah. and that I won the Finch Runtley on my first go, which is yeah, that's how it goes. I love that knife. Yeah, me too. Yeah, cool. <laughs> I call it the knife that is a really good job. What's that? The 1929 is a really good one that they have. I don't know if you can hear me. I was playing with that one today. It's it's a yeah, lot. Yeah, 1929 is good. Uh, so the the pass around really started with uh, Stasa and uh, Zelric 40. Zelric 42. I forgot his number. Zelric. Uh, but then uh, he was the one that started out, and then I took it on probably uh, in 2018 uh, time period. Uh, so that's when uh, that started, and kind of we just kept on building it up. So it's actually been working really well for us. Uh, so you know, people that join on, brands that join us, uh, so it, um, it just works out because then we get to not go as broke, and then uh, we get to actually see those knives, and they get to send it out maybe just one knife instead of sending it to one to every single reviewer. Oh, it is an act, an, an absolute boon because, uh, well, because you look at the roster of how many uh, makers or um, knife brands participate, and uh, really, I mean, because that's that I live in in a place i live right outside of dc there are no knife stores here you know you can't just go to a knife store that just doesn't you got to drive several hours to find a knife store and yeah. uh, so if 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 a uh, if a um if a design tickles my fancy i have to buy it or or find someone on the secondary market and i never trade it just never works out so you know i got to buy it so now i don't and i think that that is really like the centauri i have the centauri coming to me at some point I love the way that knife looks. And if I hadn't have gotten involved in this, David, if you hadn't have invited me into that group, uh, I would have bought it already. And who knows if I would have liked it or not. But the point is the money would have been spent. Now it doesn't have to be. So I really appreciate it. Which one is the no, Centauri? The, the Centauri artisan. is the Artisan Cutlery. Ar that's, it's the, ar that's the Artisan, right? Yeah, yeah. it's Ray with Monaco. Yeah. That, yeah. I talk like a, it's like a drop point. Here, <laughs> it's like a drop point warning. Yeah, I, I know which one you're talking about. That's I just wanted to make sure that that's the one I was thinking about. I told Ray I really like that design too. Yeah, I was able to see that one. Wait, wait, one at a time, Jared. What were you saying? I was just saying I haven't heard one person yet that didn't like it. Yeah, Everyone and they have, it. and they have the mini now. Uh, Lavender pants. What were you saying? I have the mini one in green micarta coming Saturday. <sighs> yeah, I ordered it. Do you guys guess. <laughs> Guess, guess what happened the other day? I talked with Sanford at Monterey Bay Knives, and I have two of the EXWs in tan micarta coming. Ooh. Is that the oh, big the one? K in micarta. That you, looks so you, that's good. The, that's, the, that's the everyday carry or the everywhere carry, the double yeah. tent slip oh. joint, basically. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, he's he's sending one for me, one for Nico, uh, and we're getting... We're we're paying for them, but I guarantee we're not paying what we should. Have you seen that Rosa, Rosalinda prototype or whatever they're showing out from MBK? That thing looks that's really the, great. That's the I big one. Have, yeah. That thing looks. Every time I see it, it catches my eye. Yeah. Have you guys seen this? I was looking at it today. I I did a video about it. If you want to see, it, it's not that it's a bad knife. It's just it's not a knife for me. It is so tiny. Yeah, it's teeny. And, and then for what you pay for it, there's there's some definite issues with what you pay for it. But I mean, they they did a decent job with the, the kickstop. Yeah. Hey Jim, put uh, tier one's comment up about living in the deep south. I live in the deep south. The closest place that sells knives is Walmart. You know what? I thought moving to the yeah. south. You know, I, I used to live in New York City, and I moved down here to to outside of DC uh, with my family and. Uh, uh, I expected moving south of the Mason Dixon. I was like, oh, it's going to be, you know, freedom country down there. There's going to be, you know, knife shops and gun ranges and all that. And where I live, it's very domesticated uh, because it's right outside the seat of government. So, yeah, Walmart it is. Nico, what's up, man? Hey. It's good to have you. There you go. I figured I should jump on as your community manager, Mike. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's actually my YouTube channel manager. Are you? Oh, cool. 
Yep. You're actually so that you guys we're we're gonna I'll 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 go ahead and let the cat out of the bag. Nico and I are planning on next Thursday. We're going to go all the way up to um, Petaluma and hang yeah. out with Mark Beg and Mattia Barani and get some video at their knife shop or at their at their perspective, you know, their respective shops. They work together, but so we're gonna we're gonna get some video at and we also there's a knife shop that we have to stop at, Nico. I promised the guy we were going. Okay. I'm, you know me. I'm just long for the ride. Make sure you don't burn down the house. So you're going to Mike, you're going to Mike Beg, or uh, I'm sorry, you're going to the wh where are you going? You're going to Beg Shop in Petaluma, and then yeah, where? where? Mark Beg and Mattia Barani are business partners. They have been if, even if you remember back when Mark okay. Beg and and everybody they had the TV show. Mattia was like the guy that kept them from burning Pardon. the house down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's their Nico. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have a Nico, they have a Mattia. Um, but at any rate, so they work at the same shop and we're going to go up. We've been talking about it for a while. I'm not going back to the work until August 1st. So I figured now's a great time for us to just like the last couple of weeks that I'm on, the the doc has me on disability. Yeah. We'll go up and we'll video up there with them and just get it out of the way. And it's, it's, it's a cheap trip because they have a shop. They have a, like an apartment above the shop that we can crash in. Oh God. That's not, that's not, they really have four walls on a roof. According to Mattia. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, I definitely look forward uh, to seeing what comes out of there. Uh, video. -wise. Yes. Uh, so, so wait, hang on before we get to spirited jocks and I've said, try living in the UK. You're lucky to get an open L at a fishing shop. Oh, sure. And uh, uh, you know, Jock, I, I've, I've seen, uh, you know, I follow no. you on Instagram. <laughs> You you've got some. Uh, hopefully, you know if you if you win the knife uh, from the um, Patreon giveaway this this month, uh, hopefully you can accept it in in the UK. I think you can. We'll figure out a way. Maybe I'll disassemble it or something. I don't Just know how that works. Not get caught with it. That's yeah. the whole thing. I've done so many knives. <laughs> we finished so many knives for for people in the UK and Ireland, and it's just if you're not a criminal, yeah, you're probably you fine. You can carry yeah. whatever you want. Well, that's kind of how it is here too, isn't it? Or you, you guys just label it as a gardening tool. Rivers Edge, you that. Me? <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, lavender pants. What were you saying? I was gonna say, have you guys heard of Rivers Edge Cutlery? It's like mm -hmm. a knife shop. They've done the exclusive spider clothes, like the rec exclusive BM3 that people lost oh, their mind that's... over. That shop's like five minutes from my house, from where oh, I just recently oh, moved. So I have a knife shop in like in my backyard now, and it's that's amazing. awesome. That's awesome. That's amazing. That sounds, that sounds that's, dangerous. That's, that's gotta be great. Very dangerous. Yeah, it sounds dangerous too. Yeah. It's There's hard. And they, and they always have new stuff yeah. there that just, I don't know, that they kind of hold on for people that come in the store. Um, yeah. Like I was playing with a sway back today and um, a whole bunch of other stuff that I uh, hadn't the seen. The Pena? The Pena sway back? The uh, Spider Coast sway back. Don't, 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 don't be oblique with us, Mike. Yeah. No, I meant <laughs> yeah. Pena has a sway back and it's great. Yeah, no, I know, I know, but, but it's like everywhere, everywhere, everywhere I'm probably in the spider back. coast way back. Are you not, not a, a spider fan? Guy. No, 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 it's not a fan. Um, yeah, River no, Ryan does a good job. I'm, I'm, a of is. I'm not a fan of this knife, I'll tell you that. Oh, okay, <laughs> hang on, it's, uh, yeah, Dave, what were you gonna say? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, so now Rivers Edge Cutlery, I mean, they just did a little pass down as well. And so the, the, the um, ZT0707, oh, yeah, uh, so yeah. that's the one that you sent out. So I actually got that one in. So that's going to be coming around through the pass around group after yep. uh, so does this that, one here. Does really, that double detent work? It's a double detent. It does work. It just, it was really interesting because I did the unboxing on it. I was like, why is it catching right there? Because it's not, it doesn't line up. The detent balls aren't exactly perfect. Mm -hmm. So it kind of has an initial catch and it has another catch. I was like, what's going on there? I'm that, like looking at it like, what's going on? That's a, that's a, that's a, <laughs> that's a Kai USA thing, man. They, they have, there's a lot of play in the detent ball. Uh, this is not a Kai USA. I don't have any right here with me, but uh, in my, in my bare knuckle here, in my bare knuckle and in uh, a couple of my ZTs, you get this. Let's, let's see if you can hear it. Yep. Oh, I hate that. But it's still, you know, it's still captured, and it's not, you know, first world problems for sure. But uh, you know, it is certain. Yeah, point, have that. There's a way to fix that. There yeah, actually, one. there's an easy way to fix that. How's that? You so mine's good. You take mine's a treble bit strong. and you open up your detent hole ever yeah. so slightly, not too much. Don't waller it out too much, and it lets your detent drop a little further in. 
Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and this one doesn't have that issue, but it does work. Uh, so kind of the purpose of it of, to be able to, like a lot of the lock bars, you can even touch it, breathe on it, uh, then it doesn't open. But this mm -hmm. one, you can actually put your hand on it and actually still open it. Okay. So it does work uh, for what they're trying to do. Right. Uh, but it just was just really interesting because I didn't know about the double detent when I got it in. And then when I was like trying to play with it, and I was just moving it because it does have basically an initial detent ball on, the, on there and then has another little ramp. So just kind of an interesting setup. Detent lash. That's that's the term. Yeah. Detent yeah, lash. I hate, detent I hate lash. Detent detent lash. Uh, there was another one. Somebody what what they uh what did Chris call it, Nico? Oh, detent cool. detent play. Yeah, detent play. Yeah. Yeah. Detent play. I, like, I'm just, play of detent play. I'm just yeah. too refined to take that on at this, this age. This <laughs> had that same issue. Actually, it had that's very little detent. DOC. Yeah, that's the DOC one. Um, this had a really bad case of oh, yeah. like, detent lash and or really, really soft detent. And all we did was we took a Dremel bit and opened up the detent hole and then took a little bit of material here because this is actually where that's the stop point. Oh. Um, it stops up against We're stopping too quick against the backspacer right back here. And so we just took a little bit of material off of it and now it's got great detent. There's no wobble. There's no like it. When it deploys, it goes. Yeah. There's no like Oof. oh it, oh, yeah. it kind of went out a little bit. Oh, kind of went out a little bit. Um, what kind of what kind of bit would you? Sometimes it's just gunk. Yeah, it doesn't have that issue. Hole. A little one. No, a little bit. <laughs> a very small bit. So definitely use a little bit on your Dremel for to drill out the detent hole. Lavender mm -hmm. pants. Uh, what were you saying? I said sometimes it's like gunk or lint that can get down into that yeah. deep detent mm -hmm. hole as well. Um, yeah. I had an issue with one of my knives and then I actually was watching one of Jared's videos where he had it suddenly appear on a knife. I'm like, well, shoot, I wonder if that happened. And sure enough, it was like a piece of random lint that got down into the hole that was preventing the detent ball from seating fully. <laughs> all right. All right. Wait, wait, guys. So I think I have the perfect assembly of people to ask this question because what, what, is this about okay so uh my my ritter hogue awesome knife never use it or rarely use it you know okay. never have hard used it i just like it and uh you know it's, it's kind of like after i interview someone mike i have to buy one of their knives so uh, <laughs> i got i got mine and i loved it and i had I, I have it and then all of a sudden after months and months of not really using it it's developed major side to side blade play what the hell is that about you got a loose pivot no okay yeah, so, right, so, pivot. No, no 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 okay all right so then i go to, i go to tighten the pivot and it's 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 not moving that that sucker is 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 glued mm. down so how how does blade play and you know i love hogue and i love doug ritter and so i'm not impugning either of them but how does blade play just up here from hanging it's out side to side or on side to like side. towards the lock side, side, side to side yeah like left and right like mm. yeah uh -huh. It's Did your um, lock okay. bar tension get weaker somehow magically too? That's what I was getting ready to ask. It's like, do you yeah. have something it's a, on your it's lock a, face? Well, no. It's sometimes a, that can affect the side to side play as it's well. A, it's the so access lock. It's, it's an hold. access lock. Yeah, uh, it's an access um, lock. Yeah. Duh. All right. So, okay. um, so I've had it where sometimes the screws, not not the pivot, but the rest of the body screws. Just there, it's kind of like kind of like yeah. a rim on a car where you uh you don't want to tighten one down and then just go in a circle because then it'd be lopsided. You kind of have to go in a star and slowly crank them all in slowly. Mm -hmm. And I've had it where like um where the pivot was cranked tight and then the other screws were done second, or where one down here was cranked tight and then the pivot was cranked tight and then just like that. But yeah. Once I loosen them Slight. all up, loosen everything up, and then just slowly Slight. tighten this one, and then just put them all in, basically at the same time, going okay. in, okay. and it's gotten rid of it. Um, I don't know if that's the problem or not, but I've had that problem a few times, and that's solved. Yeah. So. Hey, Jocks, uh, thanks for ch coming in. I just sent something to you in the mail, and it's always awesome to have you. Four thirty a.m. What are you doing? I hope I hope you like it. <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> sir, have a good night. It was great to have you. Hey, Bob. And I yeah. haven't disassembled so have, Hulk, but then doesn't it have the G10? Backspacer? Awesome. 
Uh-oh. We lost. Uh, we're we're losing. We're losing. We're try, losing you, David. Try pushing forward on your axis lock, and see because this has a little bit of blade play because this actually, as much as I don't like bench made knives, I <laughs> do love the 940, uh, and okay. it gets carried a good bit. Um, and That's a cool looking one too. When you get stuff up in here, it prevents you from getting your 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 lock doesn't make it all the way up. And actually, yeah. on this one, I get a little bit of blade play if. If oh, the yeah. lock isn't all the way forward, I know exactly what you're talking about. I've yeah, had that same issue too. Just all the way sure forward. It could be a bunch of pocket lint that's up in there. Just stick it in an ultrasonic yeah. cleaner. Or just just open it halfway and just rinse it out real good under the sink and see if that takes care of it. If not, it could be like Eve says. Usually, when I put a knife together, I put the pivot in finger tight. I tighten the other screws. Then I tighten yeah. the pivot down and I look for blade centering. If I'm having an issue with blade centering. I will then, if it's a double sided, I will play with the screws on each other, each side, and see yeah. if I can center it that way. If not, what I'll do is then I'll tighten the pivot almost all the way down, loosen the body screws, center it with the pivot, and then screw the body screws down. Uh, it's, yeah. it's a little, it's a little exactly. game you got to play with every knife. Like every knife yeah. is different. It's the, a bit, it's one, a little bit of back and forth. This one, this one does that, Jared. If you tighten all these down, it makes it keeps this too wide. Yeah, and you can right. never crank this down tight enough to make it actually solid. The right. millet torrent is the hardest knife to get centered. The millet torrent, if you take that apart to refinish oh, it. Oh, God, I remember that. If you find if you <laughs> on Instagram, you can see it. I've done some elaborate refinishes with different colors of ceramic and polish and, and anno and things like that. Using like, like black ceramic and some anno. And putting them back together every time. Nico's seen me do it. I've done oh, probably four or five of them. Every time, there's a lot of cursing and swearing, and the knife gets <laughs> taken apart and put back together. And then there's some cursing and swearing, and I take the knife apart, and I put it back together. And then there's some more cursing and swearing, and then I have some whiskey, and then I forget it exists, and I do something else, and I come back the next morning, and yeah. I come right back to the shop. I'm like, let's try this again. I, it, <laughs> it's, they, they're really, they're really persnickety. Huh. Oh man, that shows, I, that shows where I'm from in the world. That's a great word. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a mountain boy from the country, the hills. It's it's really it's really easy to get that blade out of center on some of these yeah. knives, uh, just because makers don't think about the fact, manufacturers don't think about the fact that somebody may be taking it apart to tinker with. Yeah, and and you know you got to take your knives apart every once in a while and clean them. It's just something yeah. that doesn't really get thought about. I don't think, especially hey, if you're know, using them. Well, oh, yeah. the knife Absolutely. maker may have that knife maker may have designed that knife and put it away, put it together in a specific fashion. Like I put these screws in first, and then I did this. Yeah. And then when you do it, you gotta you gotta crack the code on how they put that yeah. knife together. You gotta do it just right. like. That. And hey, if, Nico, if you got any Brian yeah. Nate knife, you gotta pack a lunch. Oh yeah. Oh gosh. Brian's knife is hard. Nico, this what's one. what's what's your what's your oh that's nice. What what's your What's in your wheelhouse? What are your favorite knives? What's your attraction? To uh, well, I kind of had my whole entire collection here right now, kind of oh. thing, just because at the house. So yeah. I got, you know, the mini typhoon, micro typhoon. I got all my ferrums. Got my drifter now here. Oh, yes. I'm surprised there is no detent wobble at all. Some knives, when they're handmade, especially, you know, without a lock bar insert, you just get a slight. This is rock solid so can you hold that up to your camera and jim can we go wide on nico i just want to see this thing i i, I just the knife is amazing it's oh, it, yeah. so happy that's coming ha the sharpening yeah put yeah, that no, a little bit good. put that a little bit closer I, I want to see the milling on the handle the stuff that really imp i mean it's all impressive but never having held one when i look yeah. at them like the pivot collar and the and the milling it's it's oh, yeah, that's sharp. yeah that's nice and like it it's even though it's got that milling pattern in it, it feels super nice in hand. The just the um the sanding they did to get that hand satin is mm -hmm. gorgeous on the blade. Like it's I like this is my first drifter, or I mean uh, first skiff, and yeah, it's I'm is very impressed. Warning? Is that the yeah. warning one? Yeah, because I don't oh, like the, their normal one because it's got this weird like little dip with yeah. the drop point, and it just for my aesthetic, I'm like, eh, I don't I don't like it. Um, actually. Uh, Nick at Niche Knives, he got one when we were at the Vegas show. I got to play around with it and stuff. I'm like, okay, it's nice, but I don't like the whole look over the overall blade. And this, yeah, oof. 
It's uh, just love. There he is. Nice shirt, by the way, Nico. Yeah, I yeah. Of course, I'm good looking. I had you. You. <laughs> you. you guys are just looking sharp today. I got to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, I kind of right. got a whole wheelhouse of everything. Now, one of my favorites that. <laughs> oh, that's wait. What is that? Bravo. You know, we were talking about it earlier, Bob. Um, the Hornet. Yeah. Um, the the Hornet too. So the <laughs> large version. Um, I think just went on the website on uh, Tepe's website. The uh, the Hornet two. So it'd be the extra large version and like the G ten version. Then he's got some uh, some carbon fiber versions, like some specialty versions. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know how many of those are. Hey, on. Right. But so the, so right now on Tepe's website, uh, and these things. I'll tell you, man, this thing really is very, very impressive. This is, you know, when I first saw it, it was not my style at all. Just this blade shape just really wasn't my style. But then after getting it in hand, um, the, the blades ground really nice. Just all the attention to detail. This thing is really, really sharp. The yeah, reason I had to change the name of this knife from the Hornet to the Sea Snake. I had to come up with another venomous creature. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, no, there's another knife out there called the Hornet, and he's got another version. It's going to be the Hornet too. It's like you can't call this the Hornet. And I was like, yeah. right. wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, after whatever. after we greet Ryan, I want to know if you have a Sea sne Snake around. I want to see it. Ryan, good to have you, sir. Cheers. Hey, happy hey. Thursday night knives. Happy yeah. Thursday night knives, dude. You, you have been happy. on it. You've been right. on a tear. I'll go get it. Hang uh, on. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's you. true. Um, you know, you guys brought up a funny topic a second ago uh -huh. regarding um, detent play or detent lash. Yeah. And, um, you know, everyone falls all over, like, and I don't like talking bad about anything, mm -hmm. but the old Spectre. And I had uh -huh. I had three of them, and all three had detent play mm -hmm. in, the, in the flipper tab. Really? So that surprised me, but anyway, I, I tried to reach out to them on Instagram um, on it, and nobody ever got back to me. So I was like, okay, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you've been canceled, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, right. You mentioned yeah. something bad they about me out of, They kicked me out of every group. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, get a hold of me. I, I can try and fix it. Yeah. All right. Maybe yeah, see yeah. About what we can do about dropping that detent ball further down in the hole. So I wanted to just real quick show you guys, and then I'll, I'm in and out, but I wanted to show you guys four beautiful grails that arrived this week and, uh, and figure, you know. What was the total bill on this? Uh, well, I, I, uh, you don't so have to answer that. You don't, don't have to really <laughs> want to How close there. is your wife? That's the wife right. might be watching this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. One, yeah. Yeah. Probably looks like a CVS receipt coming oh, there. Oh, so this is a beautiful Trevor Burger. That's gorgeous. LEXK Plus. Beautiful gorgeous. carbon fiber backspacer, my natural micarta in the blue, uh, accents Ooh. and titanium. The hand rub that not is fabulous. And I mean, this thing's unbelievable. The action on this thing is unbelievable. It's, it's crazy. So three things. Oh. Three things jump out. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Three yeah. things about that knife jump out. The hand rub is gorgeous. I love how the carbon fiber uh, a backspacer comes right up to the nuts of the of the tang, and then and then the the micarta itself is just gorgeous. That yeah. is yeah. So he's only done one of these in this configuration. Um, I, I saw that. It's oh. so I was lucky to I was lucky to grab it. So that was one. I kind of hate you right now. Yeah, I wanted that one really bad when I saw it. Then it sold. I'm like, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is number two. Ooh. Number two is a uh, Scott Hansen Sever. Oh, <laughs> that one. Yes. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. Okay. It's a beautiful uh, Mokutai thumb disc and backspacer. And, uh, and also on the clip. And then OD Micarta on the scales. But this blade shape, I'm telling you guys, is a de it's a demon of a performing blade shape. Beautiful yeah. hand rub Oof. on it as well. And the micarta just feels so good on it. It's a great size. Hey and Ryan, hold hold that, hold the the uh the front portion of the blade close to your uh close to the camera, please. Well, what's kind of interesting to me is that that swedge comes all the way down to the point. It's very rare that you see that because a I imagine it's difficult to actually achieve Ooh. when you're grinding it, but also yeah. um, you know, it also makes a tip that's maybe a little um uh vulnerable. I'm not sure, but I love the way the swedge comes and meets the tip. That's it, is pretty, it is pretty it is pretty 
Wait, what'd you say? I said aggressive is the word you were looking for. Yeah. That, is a, that is a piercing knife right there. That'll go through anything. Yeah. Yeah. That is 100% true. And I'll tell you, his handwork is second to none. Scott Hansen is unbelievably, uh, unbelievably talented. He does. He's only a part time maker, though. So he doesn't you don't get to see enough of his work out there. Um, so follow him closely, you yeah. know, you know, find his stuff on secondary is tough, but it, it's amazing to me that people who do this as not their full-time job can actually get to a state of adeptness that is like that. Yeah. That's, yeah, I know what that is. Yeah. Peter Rusenti. Yeah. It's, Peter, it's the Nirvana from Peter, right? Yeah. So this is a really special one. This was his last, uh, Damasteel piece that he's Ooh. doing in in, uh, in the Nirvana, in the small Nirvana. And he's done with large knives right now. He's only doing my eye through the uh, spine. Uh, but I, I love that rock pattern. Because that rock pattern. I, I did sharpen one of those oh, like a couple so months good. ago for a customer. They're, they're so, I mean, he did it on the, I mean, the clip has the same rock pattern and it's all mm -hmm. 3D contoured. So because oh. it's all 3D contoured, I mean, it the edges are soft. It just, it feels yeah. so good. And then that Bjorkman's, the Bjorkman's twist dama on it is mm. just, it's melty. I mean, it's it's just yeah. so good. And mm -hmm. uh, of course, a beautiful little Zerk. It's got Zerk for the uh, T15 Torx hardware and the pivot. Oh, nice. Uh, T15. Yeah, he's nauseatingly like beautiful, man. This thing is uh, a, a little much. Not much. Okay. Wait, I got to go put my knives to bed. Joe, always great at... Uh, I was shocked you didn't jump in, but Joe, next week you will, and it was good to see you. Ooh. And and hang on, hang, yeah, on, hang on. Before we get to any of this, uh, I just want to say tier one before was saying he got three grails this week, which is insane. And then, and then when we're done looking at Ryan's third grail knife here, uh, we're going to check out Mike's sea Four. snake. What? Huh? Nothing. Eh? <laughs> this wedge was the first thing I noticed, too. Wow. Now, this, I commented Ooh. to you, Ooh. this wedge looks sharp on this fucking knife. This is beautiful. Mm. That is so sweet. Is, this is a Kevin Foster Swordfish, which is his newest Ooh. model. How big I is know. that? It is a four-inch blade on this. Okay. That's right, man. Right. That is and, uh, right. That's like a folding buoy knife right there. The, yeah. And, uh, that's I'll see it. What's right crazy here. about it, though? is between the, the fact that it's this vintage Westinghouse paper, Ooh. like paper micarta, do you, and he's got chatter marks in there. See that? I don't know how he did that on the show, but it's pretty awesome. Jeez. And uh, he, he said this was laying around Tom Mayo's shop, and he just grabbed it. <laughs> <laughs> I heard this of those look like a he's little bit like Mayo's. May, uh, if, he's got Westinghouse laying around. I got to talk to Tom at the next show and see if like, right. send me some. Oh yeah, and then he, a, he uses steel flame to do his clips, so it's a beautiful, really cool clip. And this thing at a four inch blade, and I mean, a, a over, just over nine inches overall length, nine point one or nine point two, it weighs like four point two ounces. Mm. So wow. it's incredibly lightweight. It runs on Teflon. Nice. I mean, it's just silk, and the detent's great. So. Ooh. When Teflon's done right, Teflon is probably the smoothest you can get. I mean, just the most luxurious feel, I guess you could say. That's, that's it's my the favorite. QSP is. This QFP's got the Teflon on top of the brass washers. Sure. I'm usually not a fan of it, but yeah. for a $30 knife, this has got some of the smoothest action. It does? Oh, it's yeah, it's great. Dave, David, I told you, uh, there at Blade Banner, I told you, like, I was so surprised at how smooth it I thought it was Yeah, you know, it's funny you said that about the, the Foster Bronze and uh and Teflon because some of the smoothest knives I have um have that exact they have the the, the Foster Bronze and Teflon on both yep. sides. Oh yeah, and yeah. Like the rat so it? smooth. I can't even explain how smooth. I've got like, what knives that came to me for free that pushes other knives out of my pocket. I'm so a you guys, guy, you know. Wait, 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 wait. You guys are all going to be nauseated by this, but a lot of cold steels used to do that too. And they're all, they've always been smooth too. I don't know. A lot of people don't like cold steel, but I, I love them. All right. Let's see the sea snake and put it up. Okay. So I don't have the, I don't have the prototypes yet, but the prototypes are almost identical to this. This is a full custom. Oh. And so oh. The prototypes, the handle comes up a good bit further. Ooh. This guy wanted to have more rock pattern. Uh huh. 
And so it's rock pattern everywhere, clear down into the handle. Sweet. Uh, oh, that's so even, like even that. material. And it is the uh, fat carbon fiber titanium oh. hardware. And it's S125V that is ground, <laughs> you think it's ground down so thin. Nice. And that's got to be a bear to sharpen, but it'll stay sharp forever. You got to pack a lunch. I ain't going to lie. I, yeah. I, everybody's talking just about send, S90V. Just send it back oh, to Mike. My S90V out to other people. I'm like, no. no I not can drop up my S90V, no problem. But that S125, man. It's not tough. So to grind this knife, not counting, not counting the embellishments. We're not going to count that. It took twice as many belts to grind this knife as it usually does for me to wow. grind one of these. Like 10, 10 or more belts? Wow. Closer to 20. What? Wow. wow. No way. When, when you, if, if, you count, <laughs> if you count all the rock pattern and all that other stuff, belt. sharpening and final profiling, yeah, you're looking at closer to 18 or 20 belts. Okay, okay. How is this worth it? What does S125 Ian? And don't get me wrong, I love it when we innovate, but what the hell can S2125 VN get you that? S so I made one of these for my friend Matt, and he constantly cuts down cardboard with it. Mm. Constantly. That's like on a that. daily basis. I've only ever sharpened his knife once. I this is the only okay. Wait, no, did you do twice? Super twice, you're right. Yeah, he had a staple. Out of all the super steel <laughs> out there, where I talk about, like, you know, not everybody needs a super steel. We get away with 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 certain things. If you sharpen this right before you leave, and you're going out in the field for a week, mm -hmm. you'll be fine. You don't have to take anything with you. Did you Rockwell test it? No, I mean Elliot has done so many heat treats that we basically have a formula down where we know where it's going to come out. This is about sixty five. Come on, uh, yeah. <laughs> between 65 and 66 so you basically you say 64 to 66 that that's a range yeah um but it's a it's a double heat so when we heat treat it we heat treat this to 2100 plate quench and then do a double four hour so it's an eight hour yeah. cycle so it's yeah. two four hour cycles at a thousand degrees Holy so you get a secondary hardening and a temper and what's the production gonna be the production is a proprietary steel Okay. Oh yes. Yeah, we talked about that on the show. What's so, it called again? Uh, uh, RPM nine. And yeah. I, I'm going to tell you right now. I've already looked at it. It is really, really, really similar to. Do you remember the old G1 or GIN and G2 steels that Spider Co used? They were great steels. They cut well. They held an edge really well. They were really, really rust resistant. What were they used on? Uh, fuck, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, David dropped out again. David. But. It, it's a really, really good steel, and they're doing it as opposed to like uh, when G I N and G two were. Oh, guys! Later, Ryan. Ryan, good to see you. Real pleasure, all. good. And thanks for dropping in. Of us those cool. three ass knives, man. We we were about steels, they were they were a rolled right, take plate care. steel, and now they're doing it a this is powdered. This is a powdered metallurgy. So RPM nine that Artisan's going to use is a powdered metallurgy. Yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking at the composition. And it it's real, real similar, really high in chromium, mm -hmm. lots of carbon. You're going to have a lot of carbides. You're still going to have an abundance of chromium that can come to the surface, even after a good heat treat, after it forms carbides to give you that chromium oxide on the surface for rust resistance. It's I, I really think it's going to be great. Hey, Luke, how, how thick is your blade stock going to be on it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. Elliot does every time. <laughs> yes, he does. He does cry every time he thinks about it. I, I mean, but like I said, for me to make these customs, this really was not a financial thing. Now, I'm not going to lie. This knife cost about 800 bucks. Damn. But if you look at the time I've got invested in it, I didn't yeah. make any oh, money. Gosh. Yeah, man. He no. could have saved himself half of that by getting choosing a different steel. Hold that. Right, right. I, I like the, the steel, but I love the design. Push it closer so it kind of fills the... Now, look at that. That is beautiful. I can't wait for mine. Oof. Yeah, that's beautiful. So the cutting edge on that, I'm going to estimate three and a quarter. What is that? It's about that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's what I thought. Yeah, I was right. <laughs> What's the blade stock thickness going to be on the production ones? I think we're going with 0.18 like I did on this. 
Okay. Eight, or or it could be close to the four millimeter that we used on this. Mm -hmm. uh, problem I had with the with the with the uh, stonefish was when prototypes came in, I based it on a 0.18 stock thickness, and they couldn't get a 0.18 stock thickness. And so when I got my prototypes, prototypes were like really thin in hand. So mm -hmm. whatever I told him, I was like, whatever thickness you can't make in the blade, add it to the handle. Oh, and yeah. it, and so that you get the same feel that we were getting out of my custom stonefish. Right. Yeah, because the first ones were too. You're going to love this, Bob. I cannot that. wait. I'm like, don't forget oh, to yeah. send it. <laughs> and then I won't forget to send this. Uh, <laughs> so, guys, I I'm thinking right now we need to, we need, oh, before we oh, go. To you have one of my pipers. Of course I do. This is one of my daily carries. This is why it's so beat up. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, you told us about this also, Mike. When when I when yeah. you and I spoke last, it's a little Japanese and uh, Japanese inspired kiridashi. A little kiridashi. Is that yeah. something that you sell? Is yeah. that something that's? Oh, I like. Yeah, I've got like I think yeah. I have a uh, blade stock. I think I have blade uh, blade blanks for. I had a bunch water jetted out. Oh, okay. I, think I have blade blanks. Yeah. For How maybe many, uh, eight or nine of them left. And those are like those are like 110, 120 bucks. Great. I'll nice. take four. No, actually, I'll take them all. <laughs> the only problem I've got right now is I was using I was using um, Matt Braley down at Art. Uh, uh, oh, something Armory. Artem Artem Artemis. Artemis. Or no, uh, Artemis Carry. No. Hey. Artem at any rate, Artemis Carry, yeah. and he's been so busy that he can't make sheaths. So right now, oh, all of my knives are going out without sheaths. I and can I'm make basically. Sheath. I'm basically discounting the cost of the sheath out of the knife and saying, hey, basically, here's your knife. You have to find somebody to make you some Wait, what, What's it called again so I don't forget? Because What's that? Which which one? Model? Your your knife. Oh. Yeah, that, that knife. Oh, the Viper. That's my it's little Viper. Viper. Oh, Viper. Okay. It's not Kiridashi. It's a Viper. All right. Everything, everything's something venomous. <laughs> because. Just because. What are you going to do when you run out of venomous creatures? He's going to come up with a hypodermic. Number two, number there four. So, <laughs> out there. so the conscience of the show, who is Jim, and 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 I say that uh, I say that because uh, he saves me from myself frequently, is oh, reminding me to remind everyone uh, that the Patreon giveaway for the the ten dollar level, uh, we're going to be doing a knife giveaway every month uh, for those in the in the in the gentleman junkie category. That's ten bucks a month. Um, that giveaway is next Thursday on this show. And uh, I'm not going to say what the knife is, but it's it's very, I don't have it, but it's very much in keeping with, well, I want it. And I bought it and then said, I'm going to give it away. I haven't opened it. It hasn't even arrived yet, but uh, uh, so I'm giving that one away. <laughs> oh my so, God. so it's hopefully Armitus. you all, what's that? Armatus. I oh, can't see it. Armatus carry. Yeah, and Matt does great work. I just I, I can't ask him to stop doing his production run with Essie, where he's making a ton of money just to do some custom sheets for me. So yep. best I sheets do, I've ever had. Wait, wait, you said the greatest. He, he does some of the best. Essie, huh? what, they need sheaths. Who's Essie? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Like that's an awesome gig if you're a sheath maker. Oh, yeah. He yeah. does. He has some, his his Love sheets the are the best yeah. sheaths I've ever had made. I Actually, use like four or five other people. So there's a plug for uh, him. All right. Um, yeah. Do we get to plug giveaways on uh, our book, our giveaways too? Can sure. We plug yeah. Why not, man? So for everybody's watching, if you're not a member of my channel, I have a couple of tiers that I've been doing giveaways on on my YouTube channel for giveaways. I can't do really do giveaways on Patreon. They they throw a fit on my channel for some reason. But if you choose to join my channel, I have got giveaway stuff that I'm doing, and some of it's knife adjacent like if you're this a one for me. I, have a, I have a 300 dollars optical range finder oh, that nice. i will be uh i will be giving away that has barely ever been used knife adjacent i love it okay that's cool i, I got custom knives so, so so when you say um join your channel you mean like like subscribe and no i have so youtube <laughs> out to me i complained enough apparently about youtube's practices and things that they were doing about like censoring my content mm -hmm. and all of my stuff came up and there's actually you can join and you can be a member a paying member right there on the join and i have two oh, tiers i have a baseline cool. tier Thank you. i have a baseline tier which is five dollars i have a, a a premium tier which is 
$15 and it lays out what I do. I give, I do giveaways and stuff. And I'm going to add a dollar a month giveaway, which just only gives you access, like early access to videos oh, that's a cool. dollar a month. If somebody wants to join, because it feels unfair to put stuff at a price point where not everybody can afford it. So I would sure. like to at least offer something where they can get something and just, just show that they give a crap about the channel. Yeah. Yeah. They might, they, I mean, and, and I don't mean this in any sort of way They they might just not, want to give 15 bucks a month and that might not be able to, but they also want to show you and they want to be a part and they want to get some of the, some of the benefits. I think that's cool. Which is, which is why there's different, there's different levels of like, I have specific stuff that's going to be given away to the top tier members, like right. the, the 200, $290 stonefish. Yeah. Which, which I will give away, which I will baby. I'm going to give it my own sharpening job. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So fix it. Wood. <laughs> I'll be able to fix it. So before we go to the knife fight, cause we're, we're drawn in on two hours here and I want to do a knife fight convex grind versus traditional V ground. Ooh. Blade. Oh, before we do, yeah. Nico, uh, show me that sheath. You, you just, uh, that knife slash. So sheath. Up. This is what um, Matt did for me personally. Cause I didn't have a good pairing knife, so with Mike's help and Elliot at Ferrum Forge, they helped me make one. So I took a cheap little pairing knife from Target, I think, and I wanted a nice you know, sheath for it. So I talked to Matt, and he gave me this with little belt loops and everything so it can go yes. uh, on my back and everything. It's This sheath is great. Like Having a knife uh, there, right? I, I I recognize that. Um, I, I recognize his uh, his major <laughs> bearing as well. Yeah, and and then also the uh, the the preponderance of grommets. I recognize his style. <laughs> yeah. Those look that dope. way. I can move these. Yeah, anywhere We're, I want them. Exactly. That's, Nico, that's not a ten dollar Walmart pairing knife. That's a knife that you and I and Elliot worked together, and we taught yeah. you how to make a knife. Yeah, I was gonna say Walmart no, I, has I, that. I, I'll be, I'll I be took there a, a, a Walmart pairing knife i took that and drew it out on the steel remember okay so that's what you didn't explain because i thought yeah, i thought that yeah. i was expected to believe that that was a no. walmart pairing knife. I'm like no, i took a cheap, <laughs> cheap one that i had laid it out in the steel because i like the handle design i like the length and everything like that uh -huh. so then elliot had a piece of uh vg10 mm. yep. that was not, no n690 sorry that was just about well, n690 yeah it's kind Anything. of so you just you let me have that. Mike had some paper micarta, and we threw it together. <laughs> oh, so cool, man. I love it. All right, so lavender pants and Nico, you will be the judges tonight, and I guess I'll be the tiebreaker. Mike right. and Jared, since you are our resident sharpers, uh, sharpeners, you will be debating. Uh, convex. Wait, wait. Hold up the sword. I can't what? just like. Oh, I just hold up the damn sword. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Who doesn't love is that, is that a Shisa katana from Cold Steel? <laughs> <laughs> I had this, I had this I had this made to my height so that when I was doing cutting, I had a knife or a sword. I, I was a lot taller than all the Japanese students. <laughs> <laughs> and the instructor was like, you have to order a sword. And so we figured out the length of handle, length of blade. And uh, my blade's a little bit wider oh, than your traditional katana. I so that, this is a was, made katana. You so you did Iaido? What would you do? No, I did Kenjutsu, where Kenjutsu. you actually use a live edge and you learn how to cut on tatami. Oh, you, you yes. do all the steps of Iaido, but you also then are cutting on actual targets. Right, right. But then you're doing the shake uh, and the resheathing and all that. That's yeah. so goddamn cool. Excuse my French. All right. So <laughs> Mike and Jared, who wants to take what? No, no, no. Nico, who should take what? I I, I kind oh, of this is like, easy. Mike should take the V ground because uh, he's no, so no. used. He's so used to defending the convex. Oh, end. so you want him to defend something he does? Yes, like. yes. This is a debate. <laughs> <laughs> unfair. This That's is mean. unfair. <laughs> I'm unprepared for this. Hey, hey. I've this, 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 this is a debate. Justify my argument. V ground on a fixed sharpening system. <laughs> yeah. yeah, even better. Okay. <laughs> so this is a debate, and the point There's of debate convex is on freehand. Is is taking on something that you don't necessarily? I mean, like the 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 true sign of a great debater is someone who can take uh, a view that they absolutely disagree with personally, and turn it into their own argument. So I I, I decided now <laughs> that Mike <laughs> Mike will do V ground, and Jared will defend convex ground, uh, and I have nothing to flip here. 
because I spent all my money on knives. Hang on. I got something right here. All right. Got a Zippo we can flip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a nice looking Zippo. All right. So this thing, if it lands with that up, it's Mike. Okay. Jared goes first. Uh -huh. Just trust me. All right. <laughs> okay. So I'm convex, right? You are okay, convex, so, sir. So um, I believe it was WorkSharp um, was uh, they proved in their testings that a convex edge is actually stronger than a V grind. So with any hard use or any type of really hard cutting on hard materials or materials that could possibly chip or roll a V ground edge, you're not going to have to worry about that with a convex edge. And if I really wanted to go deep into it, I would uh, bring up the Japanese sword used a uh, convex <laughs> edge and, you know, fought battles for uh, 400 years or maybe even longer. I don't know. I made that number up. But <laughs> they, they fought battles <laughs> with a convex edge. And, you know, and they could, they didn't go wrong with for them. So why should it go wrong for us? Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Nicely so done. Stroking now, the beard of knowledge. It's <laughs> <laughs> like Samurai's fought for at least like four months. <laughs> <laughs> a week or two, and it was great. Yeah. That's okay, awesome. so v -grind. I have to justify a re grind. Okay, yeah. so a V grind is probably going to be a lot easier for the majority of people to find that angle address it majority of people use a fixed blade or a, a, a fixtured system there's just no way around it there's not a lot of people these days that want to take the time and invest into learning how to do a convex edge it takes a lot of time hmm. so majority of your systems and sharpeners are designed around a single angle edge and a v grind is going to be so much easier for the average customer the average consumer to one sharpen to maintain if somebody gets a knife sharpened with a convex, it's not something that you can easily just put on a sharp maker because you're going to hit the shoulders and things like that. A V grind for the majority of knife owners is probably going to be your best bet because it's the easiest to maintain. And it's what has been marketed for so long now that we're using <laughs> set angle grinders and robotic sharpening, which Spyderco still gets wrong and things like that. I just had to throw that in there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's, just, it's one of those things that it's it's going to be. There is no one is better than the other. It's what is best for you. Oh. Hey, man. Wow. All right. Well, both of you, both of you put up a great fight. Um, I want to get a couple of comments. If anyone's still with us, I know it's gotten late. Uh, let us know who you thought. Oh, like, I just want to go to bed. <laughs> What's that? I don't know. I just want to pee, man. I'm fine. <laughs> so three beers and a half a gallon of water. <laughs> I know. I know, man. I'm watching you drink. I'm like, this dude, I work out. So anyway, uh, <laughs> Nico, uh, Nico, lavender pants. Let's let's hear your let's hear your uh, after action uh, reports on this here debate. Would you like to go first, lavender? Or? Sure. Um yeah, I was a pretty poor juror in this aspect because I watch way too many DBK videos um, and they've brainwashed me into thinking that the convex grind or the Scandi grind <laughs> is the king of all grinds. So um, I'm going to have to give it to Jared just from pre-brainwashing here. Unfair Sorry, advantage. Rus Rusty well, agreed. <laughs> well, you gave uh, um, me an unfair advantage too, Mike, because you've brainwashed me into convex as well. After three years of friendship and you showing me and me experiencing a V grind and a convex grind that's done well, oh, it's, man. There's, it's hard to argue the benefits and just the longevity that your knives get when you have a very good convex edge on your knives. Well, the last three commenters, Lindy Lou, and then who were the two before? Oh, yeah, Rusty, Rusty. and Bony Blades. They, they yeah. all think Jared won. Now, yeah. Okay, there we go, Jared. So, so uh, it's when, better looking. That's yeah, I won and lost in the same breath. If you really think, <laughs> <laughs> don't we all? Don't we all? Winning always feels like that, Jared. 
<laughs> <laughs> it's it's called uh, what do they call Im- it? The imposter syndrome. Everyone's gonna know I didn't really win. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, what? Uh, before we all sign off, let's let's do a little round table. Let's find out what we all have coming in. Or, or what you know, what we're looking forward to in the offing for uh, for knives. I, I will start by saying, uh, well, I got this, and I didn't even talk about it tonight, which I cannot believe. Oh, nice! I, yeah, I, that was, yeah, I watched I, that. I watched that unboxing video. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that looks great. Hey, while you've got that out, I, I said you had that. I have the fixed blade oh. combat version that was issued to me in Iraq. Shoot. Yeah, this is the uh, the Gerber Harzi Hunter. Oh, that's so cool! Blade. And this was carried. This was actually carried on my on my uh, LBE. That's that awesome. is so badass. That's cool. You you not only got a got a Harzi, but you got a Harzi that came through the whole system and got to you, which to me yeah. is I mean that's extra cool. Yeah. Cold steel. Oh, okay, this was yeah. carried carried downrange for a lot of people. I borrowed it out to people. There's a lot of really good knives out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is my newest very good knife. And uh, um, I, man, I'm smitten. I am stupid smitten. Thank you, Jim. Jim made a special lower third just for this knife, which I really <laughs> that, That's a nice Look at this. It, it's got a very, very interesting um, stone wash on the titanium. And then if you look at the finger uh, access there you can see some of the machining marks and i find that charming you know people yeah. know i like machining marks e- even on emerson's um okay. <laughs> <laughs> those, are, those are chatter mistakes those like, <laughs> chatter, <laughs> chatter. <laughs> but, but but even this i mean like this is not chatter that that's no. intentional no, that, obviously. That's, and that's a sexy looking knife they, they do such good work for sure. I watched, your, uh, I watched your unboxing video. I mean, obviously, you saw my comment. But <laughs> yeah. I, honestly, honestly, it's been a long time since I've been jealous watching someone open a knife. I was like, oh, yeah. man, that's oh, that's a good one, too. That's yeah. a good one. Those He's actually excited. Guys. I'm like, <laughs> how did I forget that that was out there? And how did yeah. Yeah. Bob beat me to it? <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently, uh, I got I got a number of comments and actually um, – uh, Slacy Dicey Brian uh, said on his video, he got one recently that if you just call them, you know, you look at their website and they're like, oh, we're out of we're out of this. We're out of that. But if you call them and say, I want a plain Jane, a Spartan Hersey folder or like he did, he called them and said, I want I want uh, stone washed with the PVD coating. They're like, sure. They made it in two days, had it out to him in three. Wow. My wife is going to murder you. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to have a Japanese woman. She's gonna have to drive across the country in diapers to get to me. So, <laughs> all right. So, uh, Mike, what do you have coming in next? Um, so I, you know, like I said, having quit that job where I made a lot of money to start my own business mm. and now working construction for sixteen dollars an hour, not much coming in. But we we did strike up a friendship with uh, Sanford over at. Uh, Monterey Bay. Monterey Bay knives and we worked out a deal we did a I did a review um he loved the video that Nico and I did and so basically he is sending us two of the what, what are they the EWC everywhere EWC. the, the cool. double tent slip joint I loved it I knew I was going to get one and I'm get Nico and I are both getting them in uh brown micarta which they're mm. only making 20 of oh uh-huh. That's, so wait that, that's what I've got coming in. Um, other than that, just my prototypes of the uh, of the sea snake. Stonefish. Uh, I mean the sea snake. Oh, sea snake. Yeah, and and I'm hoping those I'm hoping those show up and those to to plug them. Those are going to be available, I believe, if I remember correctly. We're talking about them being available on Amazon, and they're under a hundred dollars. Oh, cool. And and they're in a proprietary steel, and mm-hmm. that's, that's also very. And it's a really good steel. Jared, what do you have coming in that you're excited okay, about? So, so I can't really let the cat out of the bag, but it will be tomorrow. I oh, have ooh. an absolute epic unboxing. <laughs> and <laughs> it's, it's insane. So just uh, check out the channel tomorrow night, and yeah, you will okay, see. Okay, all right. Any hints? No. Um, it's some customs. Okay. Jared, don't forget you're getting this for review as well. I know. I can't wait. Oh my I goodness. got some stuff to send your way, too. How do we do a high five right here? Bam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, 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 that's right. Yeah. 
It's completely backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Look at, all right, now, <laughs> lavender pants. What do you have coming in to your exceptional um, collection? Actually, today was I was supposed to have an umnums on arrive, and and it did not. So we'll see where it is in the mail, and hopefully, I get that tomorrow. Um, also, have a spider monkey and a small um, that Centauri coming in, but um, yeah, bought this week. I sold a lot of knives too, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one thing I wanted to show though is I, I I picked this up recently too, and this is like one of those knives that look terrible on paper, but you got to get in the hand. It's like um, the Boker Gulo Pro. Oh, I've been hearing um, about this. Yeah, steel and D two, like steel frame lock D two. I mean cheap materials, and it's a hundred dollars, which doesn't make sense. Like crappy pocket clip, right. but oh my gosh, like. This action is unbelievable. And the, the fit and finish and everything is just kind of unreal. Boker is so, weird, uh, man. Boker is weird. They have uh, like, like their, later, the, their lateralis was awesome. Uh, That's I, the I, next one I want to look at. Yeah. Yeah. It looks I've handled awesome. that. That's good. The, the, then uh, I got a new kitchen knife, too. Ooh. Ever hear of Werther Cutlery in Ohio? Ooh. Yes, I do. I have a number of those Werther blades. Guys, yeah, they're, guys, they're like. I have to jump in on this. Yeah. I go to the museum every time I go home. It's 20 uh, minutes from my house in New Philadelphia, go, Ohio. Okay. So, so my I, entire wife's family have, is from New Philadelphia, Ohio. I got married <laughs> in New Philadelphia. I have met the guy. They make the, they make the, hey, you got to yeah. watch the video of them making the, 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 uh, the, the, the pliers, the wooden pliers. Yep. Uh oh. Yeah. Dover in New up. Philadelphia is where my wife's family Bob's is. Like, from. Time's up. Got to go. <laughs> Yeah, this is S thirty five VN. Yeah, they're great. S thirty five VN. That's S thirty five. Oh shit! Wow. Wow. I have yes. two, two, two of their knives that my mom gave me because I grew up in Ohio also. And uh, my parents went down to their factory a couple of years ago, and they bought a couple of knives. And my mom gave me a uh, a meat cutting knife. Uh, what do you call it? A a, a big carver, and yeah. then a smaller, a, like paring knife. And are they, are they magnetically in the in the cutting block. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I got oh, yeah. my mom. That's so cool. And That's they're awesome. a small family company. It's so yep. cool that yeah. the three of us know these goddamn guys. I'm well, gonna have to tell my, my parents. I need that to get one. Actually, you do? I need to get one. Mike's talking yeah, about them all the time. One. I mean, the I've best. had a set of them for the ten best. years. I got as a wedding gift. Ooh, so nice. And and Jared, 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 you're 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 close. Yeah, <laughs> the only company I know of that when you order a knife, they ask if you're right or left-handed because yeah. they brought, yeah. They, yeah, they do a bias grind. They do a right hand or left. Right. Hand, yeah. right hand. You can tell it's hand ground too. I'm I'm calling these guys. I want to have them on the podcast. They're great. They're, they're great. They're a small family company. Yeah. They're just just up north from where I live in Ohio. That is so funny, man. Uh, yeah, I grew up in Northeast Ohio, and you know, my, my I don't live there now, but you know, my parents do a lot of just get. Let's get in the car and go to the knife. I live in Columbus now. Shocked so. it. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah. you mean Flavor Town? <laughs> just kidding. Uh, I'm from Columbus. I, I know, but it was weren't some people talking about changing the name of Columbus? No. Oh yeah. <laughs> to flavor town all right so uh well that's cool i'm i'm from cleveland uh and uh well that right outside uh cleveland Santa. what's that Akron, Canton Canton area. Area. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool okay so nico what do you have coming in and uh and and what do you got that's exciting okay uh well mike forgot that he's gonna get this soon so he mm -hmm. can do a review carry it and all that that's stuff cool. So he's going to get that soon because basically all my knives go to Mike so he can do videos or just play around with them. Right. <laughs> but um, got the EWC coming in, mm -hmm. like Mike said. Um, I am hoping to hear something from Drop about the QSP Penguin. They oh. said that it's delayed. So I, I've got one of those when they were doing their special for like 15 bucks because they had a coupon. And after you know meeting uh, David and stuff and having him talk about um, QSP and when we're in the Portland show and seeing all their stuff, which is – know just amazing for the price especially so i'm waiting on that one to see hopefully i get an email soon from that and then i am in talks getting an older firm with a buddy so hopefully cool. getting the archon nico you you uh you got the what was it the qsp woodpecker for your buddy 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great knife. Yeah, that was great. woodpecker. Okay. Yeah, and it was a it was a special because normally they are just have the straight drop. That one they had a few models. I think he said he had like five or something at the Portland show where they came with the wave feature and. <laughs> I'm the resident knife guy with all my friends kind of thing. I've gotten yeah. people into knives because of, you know, my friendships and everything. So he's like, okay, I want a really good knife because I have crappy ones. I work, um, he does like stage work. So he mm -hmm. does behind the scenes stuff and he wanted a really good knife that had a good edge and had a wave feature. So I found everything and it was like 200 bucks. Oh, cool. In M390. And I was like, I, dude, this is everything you want. It's like, yeah, get it. <laughs> I was super impressed with that knife. Yeah, like, that, oh. I saw it when we were at the show, and then we came in for sharpening, and I, I got to mess with it. I did a video about it. it I was like, <laughs> like really, like I said on the podcast, everybody's just like, it's not buy American, it's don't buy Chinese. But the fact is, you got to recognize quality where it is. Yeah. If they're doing yeah. quality work, you got to yeah, recognize yeah. it. Yeah, you you might you might change that to don't buy crap. Uh, yeah, no matter <laughs> where it is. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's why I'm at with my Americans collection. A lot of Americans make money off of the knives that are bought from China, too. There's a lot of people that make diamonds, and a yeah. lot of the good companies are actually getting the, their knives designed by people from the USA because, you know, they know where the money's at. Yeah. yeah I, and Yeah. I was talking with Elliot Williamson, and Elliot, you know, Elliot was an American-made company all the way until here just recently, and not, not to go on a tangent. But I told him my thoughts on, like, after we had talked about it on the podcast, I told him my thoughts on it. Like, people are saying, don't buy Chinese, don't buy Chinese, because it supports the Chinese government. But the fact is that less than 50% of that money, closer to 30%, actually goes to the Chinese government. Chinese. That, that actually, they only make about 30%. Everything else goes to the vendors and the makers and all that stuff. The, the, the wee stonefish, they didn't make anything on that. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that right now. There are so many knives that have not been sold yet, and they paid me out up front. Oh, that's cool. I yeah. made money. Blade HQ made money. Knife Center made money. White Mountain Knives made money. All those companies in Europe that sold my knife that I talked to, all those places made money. Do you know who really didn't make very much money? We Knife Company. That it really is didn't make much. So that that argument, I really just don't agree with that argument. Yeah, it's an optical argument. I mean, yeah. and, and you know, it's an emotional argument too. But it's it's a lot about uh, it's a lot about how things look. And and you know, uh, Dave Wattenberg, well, said he said something similar. He's like, every time you buy a Protec, but but I would I would widen that out. Every time you do buy a knife, you're supporting. Say you buy it from Blade HQ, you're. Su you're supporting right Blade HQ. You're supporting DHL, who brings the knives there. You're you're supporting the coffee guy who sells coffee to the guy who stocks the knife at, at Blade HQ. Right? You're, you're, right. you're, you're paying a lot of different people there. This is coming from a guy. I had a knife made in China. Coming from a guy that gave up his entire adult life to the military. Like Even still, I have all of my qualification pins on my hat. And I don't see an issue with it. And so for, for a guy for a guy to just go on YouTube and say, oh, you can't do this. Yeah. You know, go blow. It's, yeah, it's, and it's also, it's also important to remember what we're talking about. We're talking yeah. about luxury items. We are yeah. talking about things that we buy that we don't need that we like. And, th and there's nothing wrong with that. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> thank God that we can, you know, and, yeah. and you know, thank circumstance that uh, we... Uh, now have a thriving knife uh, theater that we can enter and like just kind of pick and choose. I don't know why I said theater. It's more like a cafeteria, <laughs> you know. Yeah. We can go in and pick and choose, and you know, I, I feel like pizza today. I'm getting, yeah. I'm getting yeah, like this. It's more like a Vegas buffet. Yeah. It's a little bit, it's a little bit better than a cafeteria. Just a little <laughs> <laughs> All right, now now that we're talking about food, they say they say that uh, when people run out of. Uh, talking about the weather they always talk about food because everyone has to eat so on that note gents i would like to bid you all a fond farewell it was really awesome having you all come in and not only yeah. just dropping in but having an extended conversation nico it was nice to meet you lavender mean, man. it was very good to meet you too man and uh like i've said in the past i really appreciate your support of the channel it's greatly appreciated and um jared as always a pleasure and i gotta say uh right here changed my whole view of this knife it is now a like pocket lightsaber 
And, uh, and I really appreciate it. And, and one thing we didn't really get to, and maybe we can do this another time, is how uh, Mike helped you learn how to sharpen. And, and you know, because I, th I think he had something to do with it. And, oh, he definitely did. And, he uh, definitely inspired me big time. Awesome. It happens when uh, you're old. That's what happens when you're old, the oldest guy in the room. Yeah, you're not the oldest guy. I don't think you are, Mike. Uh, Mike, thank <laughs> you for coming on, sir. Well, I, I'm I'm going on 49. Oh, How old are you, oh, Mike? I'm 40, oh, wow. almost 46. Oh, babe in arms. <laughs> 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 All right, so, <laughs> Mike, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much also for coming on. It's it's been a pleasure. You guys are all are all, not only just like knowledgeable and fun to hang out with, uh, but you're also you have your opinions and you have a lot of knowledge. And one of the great things for me about doing this show and doing the podcast and other stuff is that, you know, I'm learning so much from all of you guys. And even if I don't score a Holt or, uh, you know, something like that, it's really cool to 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 see them you know, in your hands and to know, thanks for having me on last day for the Kickstarter of the ingress is Tuesday. Everybody have to pick one of those up. Yeah. I will, really. I will try to get the video out and I'll yeah, just be public. I won't make it for the, for just my members. I'll get it out so that I can get it out before Tuesday. Yeah. And, and I will uh, try and get someone named Poon just came on. Uh, Sad. Catch me. <laughs> well, Poon next time we, we love Poon. We'd love to have you here. Next week. <laughs> Sorry, I, it's late. Um, oh my god, that's part for the course. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, definitely everybody get on get on the uh, Kickstarter for the for the uh, the niche ingress. It is really badass uh, having them in my hand now. I'm very excited about them. So <clears throat> for Mike Emler, Jared Neve, uh, Nico, and Lavender Pants, and of course Jim working his magic. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, thank you, Jim. Make Working sure to hit like and subscribe and go yeah. sign up on Patreons, right? Jesus, hit up Needs Knives Patreon. I'm a Patreon, you know? Yeah. Hit up we Come got on, a Patreon everybody. giveaway coming this up this, at the end of this month. Huge. Yes. Thank you. Sign I was for Mike. Sign up for Mike's, uh, your, your little club, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, your your non-Patreon club. If you like the yeah. bloviating of any of these gentlemen, you can support them in various ways. Thanks, I, man. I, either it's Patreon or it's on YouTube exclusive or what do they call it? YouTube Red, I think. Or you, uh, it's the memberships. Like yeah. you, yeah. you don't have it's like Metal Complex's little Knights of the Round thing. He does. Right. <laughs> I'm not sure what it is, but yeah. I, I'm not sure either. But, he, <laughs> but he's a prolific dude too. Nice guy. All right. So I would like to say. Thank you all for coming. And uh, like I said before, for Jim behind the, the behind the switcher, I'm Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco saying, please don't take dull for an answer. Peace. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>